I just have to win once more. And I'm done with Elaine, and that's the last of the White Tower for me. Just once more. Oh, my sweet summer child. <laughs> That is right. The order of our things is wrong somehow. I don't know how that changed. The order of our yeah, things. Yeah, our names were over the theme song that whole time. But welcome everybody to the 13th edition of the Nerdy Wordy Book Club. This week, The Dragon Reborn, chapters 33 through 45. Yes. 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 <laughs> Numbers are hard. <laughs> God, just wanted okay. to say a huge hello to everyone in the chat. Yes. Uh, thanks for joining us live, folks. Uh, if you want to join us live, if you're listening to the podcast feed or watching this later, the Nerdy Wordy Book Club streams every Friday morning at 11 a.m. Eastern, standard time on youtube.com slash nerdy nightly. <laughs> you can also pick up some food. Isn't that right, Clarus? Food. I like food. What? Yeah, that's right. Uh, this stream is sponsored by HelloFresh. Y'all, I just want to say a huge thank you to everyone who has already signed up. If that's you, post a rating review in the chat right now because HelloFresh is a meal service delivery kit that shows up to your door however often you want it with the food that you decide. And honestly, it's really good. It's like, here's all the ingredients. Here's the instructions how to make it. And you don't have to think about it because... My least favorite part about dinner is being like, oh, what do I make? And then making sure I have all the ingredients for it. And yeah. so this is the best way to avoid that stress in your life. That That is very, very <laughs> true. Uh, also, before we get into the main show, I just want to say uh, thank you to our mods. Thank you for keeping yes. us from being spoiled. And if you uh, want to disagree with our mods, they win. This is This is their space. Yeah. So listen to the mods. <laughs> we are guests in their space. <laughs> Clarus, now that we're, uh, did you say that the code is US only? I did not. The code is unfortunately The HelloFresh code is US only, unfortunately, um, which is hilarious because they Fresh. wanted us to, <laughs> I love HelloFresh. This is not me disparaging them at all, yeah, but yeah. They, they were like, oh, if you could like sign up on stream so people could see how easy it was. And really? I was like, yeah, sure. And then I got the code and I was like, I mean, I, I, I live in Canada, so I, so I cannot do that. That's not going to work, unfortunately. But, but we uh, signed up for HelloFresh anyway, and I'm, I have not yet been disappointed. No, no. Everything has been what? tasty as heck. Um, So if you use our code, you do get 16 free meals. It's a really good deal. So yeah. I, I, I don't know what to tell you. We have a bunch of people in the chat who use HelloFresh who like rave about it. We like it. Give it a try. What's the worst that could happen? Yeah. And so here we are. I uh, want to ask Clarus. We are in a different section of... I like your shirt. I like it. Sorry. It looks good. Thank We're you. We're in a di different section of... The book? Yes. How did you feel about it? <laughs> uh, uh, wow, things move real fast in this one. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Which we, we said last week, even. And they're just... That bowl just keep That ball just keeps rolling. I combined roll and ball, and I said bowl, and it... Didn't make sense, but uh, Proud of you. you know, you knew what I meant. <laughs> you, yeah, you knew, you knew what I meant. Um, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I, I, yeah, I knew. That's why we're you married. Of course, I you did knew. not know. I, I don't understand most of what comes out of your mouth, to be honest. Um, I don't know if that's a reflection on you or on. Oh, me. it's definitely a reflection <laughs> on me. <laughs> it, it's definitely a reflection on my inability to see past my own nose. Um, it's a big nose. It gets in the way. You. Oh, please. Um, My nose is bigger than yours. No. There is not a single part of your body that is bigger than any part of my body. I don't know. I think my nose might be. Like, I think it's if not. we measure. <laughs> it's I, not. I don't know. I don't need to know how much bigger my nose is, with, but I know that it is. This is not what people are here for. They're here to talk <laughs> about the dragon reborn because the, this section is not really about the dragon. But no. it's about everyone being slowly corralled down to where he is. Yeah. Because when we last left off, where were we? When we last left off, oh my god, I don't even know. I ask you this question, I think I think this is like the third week in a row I've asked you this question. No, no it's not. You're always so surprised. After, nope, that's it, that's not. Because we were with the girls last time, and then we switch over to Perrin, right? Yeah. Yeah, oh, it's Matt, so last time, last time Matt leaves the city, he does a crazy gamble magic thingy. Mm -hmm. 
um, and he can get away. Um, and then, uh, yeah. Egwene and the, the girls, girls are, are also leaving. The, yeah, Tarbalan. they're also leaving. The Amarillo Seat's like, let me give some cash for that. And Don't spend it all in one place. The last time we saw Perrin, uh, mm-hmm. they were coming down from the mountains, and uh, they had ju- Perrin had just met the man who was went like full wolf brother and went crazy because of it. Yeah, wow, that feels like forever ago. Yeah. Because that was section one. Perrin wasn't in last section at all. Perrin right? was not in last section at all. Right, right, right. I, I don't, th- or maybe like the first couple episodes might have been him. Yeah. But it was mostly uh, the Tarvalon stuff last week. Mm-hmm. But this week we start back with Perrin. Y'all, we're in chapter 33. Perrin is uh, chasing see. Rand. Um, he's burned a village. He uprooted gold in a different village. He dried up a well in a different village and then he restarted a river that had long been dead in yet another village there's a lot of villages yeah <laughs> like it's like it's like every like hundred yards like uh, you know what we're gonna put down roots here well this like, happens again when we're with Egwene and the girls on the ship where they're like oh there's a village there's a village there's a village, there's a village. Yeah. I was like Either they're moving very quickly, or there's just, like, a lot of villages very close to each other. I, I would like to think that the boat is just going at a decent pace. Because mm-hmm. it's not yeah. a very large boat. Um, right. It do, they do talk about, like, uh, the, the, a bunch of larger boats, like, uh, that they are not one of, like, the larger boats. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm assuming they're actually traveling fairly quickly, and it is much faster than traveling by horse. Um, oh, yes. Yes. Yeah. Depending on the river. Uh, yeah. Also, uh, Hunter Schuviller, thank you for joining the Nargs of the Nerd Table. Yeah, thank you That's so much for so that. That's so sweet. Welcome to the Nargs, my friend. It's a good, it's a good table. Welcome to, to the Nargs. Um, <laughs> and so, yeah, so they're they're going and going and going. Mm-hmm. They get to a new town. And this town is different from the other towns because this town has a name. We're in yeah, Bremen. This, <laughs> this one gets a name. That's how you know it's going to be important. It's how you know something's going to happen there. <laughs> exactly. Is if it has a name. Uh, so we, we walk into Remen and they get to the town square mm-hmm. and immediately we see an Aiel in a cage. Which is a, well, it was Min. Min's, Min's prophecy. Prop, like what vision, yeah. That an Aiel in a cage was going to be very important to Perrin. And uh, turns out he's kind of important for now, but I think he'll be, well, kind of, like, um, it forces a parent to murder a bunch of white cloaks in the middle of the square. That's and, true. And I think it will be more important later. But it is, like, at least a little bit important now because then they have to flee, right? I really I really want to know now what the show is going to do with Perrin's violence. Because yeah. he does not... He has, he is non-violent mm-hmm. after uh, the prologue. Mm-hmm. Or the, the pilot, sorry. He <laughs> does not have an axe. And his axe is so important and, like, when, when we were watching the show, there would be people in the comments of our spoiler chats for the show being like, Perrin's axe. And I was like, does it really matter? Like, does Perrin's axe, how important could Perrin's axe be to his personage? <laughs> that people keep commenting about it. Turns out, it's and now important. And now we're reading, and I'm like, this is, like, really, this is really a, like, inherent part of his being. Like, yeah. the pull of the axe. And, and honestly, the, like, the value of the axe is his, like, not only this thing that he hates because... It is this reminder of the violence that he has struck on the world, but also a reminder of home and and of his mentor and and his relationship to his childhood. And the axe is both things to him. And I, I, yeah, I just, I'm, it's so bizarre now, especially because he is so reluctantly violent throughout the book. Yeah. That... I don't, I, I, I'm so curious how to see if they're going to bring that into the show or if they're just going to keep him in this sort of like nonviolent role that they've given him in season one. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. And, and it's one of those things where when it, when it, when there was like, there's an IU man in a cage, I was like, oh, is he going to have a weird purple stone on him from the show? And that didn't happen. And I was kind of disappointed. Oh, that's so. right. There was a weird purple stone. Uh, yeah. I still what did know. the purple stone mean? I, I have no idea. Still, I'm very confused on that. Um, I'm assuming that's a later book thing. Maybe? Um, we'll get to it eventually. Yeah. But I was like, oh, maybe we're going to finally find out what this is in the show. No. No. <laughs> well, and, and no. the show doing the IL in a cage but murdered is weird now too, right? Because yeah, already dead. Yeah. It it almost it almost feels like Gaul should have, that should have been Gaul and he should have been alive and maybe like Matt and Rand should have saved him. Yeah. And like maybe the show could have done it in a way that that was Gaul and he got away and he looks at Rand as like the man who came the, you know, as the prophesied one. And well, so he's yeah. the reason the IEL come over or Starts something like that. Over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, mm-hmm. they could have, like, worked that into the show somehow. Yeah. I, I, I really am surprised that they just, like, murdered that IEL on the show. And then yeah. Matt robbed his dead corpse. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, it was a little, as opposed to just having to play the flute. Yeah, yeah. But we do get some interesting uh, clues in that first chapter of this section um, regarding what we find out later, the Dark Hounds. Um, Because previous to this, all we know is that Rand was, like, killing dogs. (laughs) Do you think all of those dogs are Dark Hounds? Yeah. Okay. I don't think Rand is going around, like, killing puppies. You know what I mean? That would be a weird... I'm not saying puppies. I just mean, like, hunting dogs. Like, I think that, like... I wouldn't be surprised if the dark friends had hunting dogs that they were tra- tracking Rand with. I, it, it just, it, it makes sense that they would be dark hounds because the sulfur smell that Perrin smells and the tracks in the stone. Oh, sure. I just mean in the in the one scene where we were with, in last week's scene, where we're with Rand and he's killing dogs, they didn't seem to be like difficult, but maybe that's just because he is the dragon reborn. He, he can... Well, yeah, he used magic. Mm-hmm. He, he found a way and he's like, I won't be hunted again. Like it seemed like it might have... Taking him a couple tries to make it that easy. And, just, and I say easy and... I'm surprised. It seems like there's a lot of these dark hands. It seems like yeah. the further we get into these books, there's more and more, like, shadow spawn creatures. Yeah, like different variations. And there's a lot of them. Yeah. <laughs> They've just we, been all chilling. <laughs> we haven't really seen the, like, Drakkar? Dra- Dra- Drakkar, uh, Dra- yes. Dra- yeah. We haven't, we haven't seen one since book one? seen those really since. I think there no, was mentioned there was, No, there was the one two. that attacked my reign at the ladies farm thing yeah the library in this book um in this book we've kind of switched over to dark hounds instead which i wonder if there are just different creatures uh, that serve different forsaken Mm, right because we know that we know where these dark hounds are coming from i'm sorry to jump to the end but we do know that there is one forsaken specifically who has like herds packs of dark hounds (laughs) so i don't think that well yeah we'll get to we'll get to that in a minute We'll get um, the, that in an hour. For now, the, the our friends Perrin and the group get to the inn where they meet Orban and Gon, I mm-hmm. think were their names. Uh, and they are telling stories mm-hmm. about how the, the twelve the twelve married gentlemen setting out to find the horn of Valir mm-hmm. were ambushed by twenty vicious, snarling, disgusting Aiel warriors. And though they lost six, they killed 18... No, they killed... Sorry, they killed 19 Aiel. No, no. And they, took one prisoner. No, no, no. There were some that fled. Okay, there were some that fled. Say... But, but but Lan is like, nah, bish. Oh, yeah. Lan nah. is not buying it. So, so, okay. So, they fought 20 Aiel and, yeah. oh, and six of them died. Okay, yeah. I didn't write down. I, I'm pretty sure that they said, like, some escaped or whatever. But I was reading this and I was like... Mm-hmm. No, sure. I'm so sure. sorry. <laughs> and it seems sus. It, I don't even have to meet the Aiel. No, to know no. that like I've heard about a warrior tribe. The the hunters of the horn did not dig down this warrior tribe. Absolutely not. At random. No, absolutely not. Of um, course, parent parent sees that Aiel and he's like, God damn, that looks like Rand. <laughs> I know. I was like, Wow, do all Aiel look the same? All right. They say that every time. I'm like, they're they're all ginger. It happens every and time tall, in the section. I guess. Egwene is like, God damn! Like, I think that like, I'm marrying into that family, and I'm like, Egwene, what? Yeah, yeah. I was like, uh, well, apparently, maybe not. I don't know. She's like very adamantly like, we're never gonna be together, even though I don't actually understand why. Yeah. Like, uh, because he's gonna go. He's going to go nuts, though, and kill everybody. Yeah, but I don't know. Like she's She doesn't like, think anyone's going to end up with him. Oh, it seems like she's like, eh, other people can... No, because the, later on, there's... there. Well, well, we'll get to it, but she, she's thinking about her and Elaine, and she's like... Because in the first sister's conversation that we, uh-huh. we'll get to, she says, like, no, n- I, I know that you want him, but neither of us are going to have him. I guess, yeah, she does yeah. say neither. Yeah, okay, that's fair. I f- For a moment, I was like, oh, is it going just, like... You know what? I don't think like we're destined to be together, but mm-hmm. like, good luck. <laughs> uh, Ceasing says uh, yes. She's afraid of the taint. I too am afraid of the taint. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's a dark place. They they get rooms at this inn, mm-hmm. and they're going up to the rooms. They're tired. Been a long day. The one little detail that uh, on the way they do find Rand's horse red, mauled by dogs. Oh, that, that was red. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't know that, that was, was red. That was another. We, yeah, we lost red. Oh, I thought that was just a horse he was on. No, because I'm pretty sure he took yeah. Damn. I know. Pour one out for a real one, you know? <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. Red did a, 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 a red, red pulled through, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, red, like, did, he, red he did work. Red he did carried. work. Uh, um, so uh, they're going up to the rooms, <laughs> mm-hmm. but Perrin turns around and he's like, yo, 
that girl is staring at me. Yeah. What the hell is happening? Yeah. To which we get the response of Maureen being like, yeah, you're, you're or, 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 I think it was Lan who's like, dude, you're good looking. Sh- stop it. I, I think it might have been Maureen. <laughs> I can't remember which of them I, was. But they're, but they're like, yeah, you're not unattractive, so. <laughs> um, Methany, Methany thank, thank you for the for super the chat. Super chat. I just double checked and Rafe confirmed that the Reddit, a- in the Reddit <laughs> AMA, that the, uh, that I yield was not the one parent means to the book. So he's apparently still coming up. Parents later show development was terrible, by the way. Yes. Because uh, it didn't exist. Because um, <laughs> it didn't happen. It wasn't there. Um, mm-hmm, yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, that's sad. I, I'm I'm sad to uh, I'm sad to hear that Red is passed. But uh, we meet my new favorite character in your the new, entire franchise. Your new favorite. Okay. I, you guys, I love this girl so much. You love a woman with a strong nose. I do love a woman with a strong nose. Uh, <laughs> I also love a woman who openly stares at people constantly despite the fact that she thinks that they're wildly dangerous yeah and then openly chases like, them around without pretending at all and just not, walks up yeah. to them and is like hi i'm following you now yeah yeah like no chill serene has zero chill and I- i'm here for it to be honest <laughs> i was like this i I love this girl. She's great. Right? And then Zareen never slows down. Zareen no. is Zareen is funny the entire <laughs> section of this book. Mm-hmm. The the way that she's giving Perrin crap yeah. is so funny. She's forceful in a way that's so insanely stupid, but she uh-huh. commits. And like I appreciate a girl who commits to a bit. You know oh, what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. I commit to bits. So Zareen was like, I'm going to hunt the horn mm-hmm. and I'm going to go hard. Mm-hmm. And she goes hard. Yeah. And I, I appreciate that, y'all. Yeah. I was reading this girl. I was like, damn, you are crazy. Yeah, you yeah. are wild. Perrin is in danger. Per- yeah, yeah, yeah. Perrin is screwed. Um, no, I can't, I can't, I can't wait for them to, mm-hmm. for yeah. some, I don't know for what some, it's going to be, but yeah, I don't, if, I'm like, is it going to be a big blowout? Like, where is this going? But, um, <clears throat> she makes me laugh consistently mm-hmm. and I, I appreciate when books make me laugh. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. That- uh, can I, I want to bring up the way that he describes her. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I only wrote down one description cause he describes everything about her. Uh-huh. He describes this unnamed girl as having a generous mouth. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Chat, what is a generous mouth? It means you got them thick lips. It, it, um, <laughs> name a person who you think you would describe, like a celebrity who who's easy to picture, that you would describe as having a generous mouth. Because I cannot figure out what this means. Well, I know like a lot of girls... Who I would say have that, but they're all, it's all injections. <laughs> so, Stephen Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 I can. Okay. Uh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah. I, yeah, I find that that's like what, like, the, the Botox is trying to I'm uh, realizing right now recreate. that Chad is just naming some of the most attractive people on the planet. Scarlett so Johansson. maybe having a generous mouth is a good thing. I think Scarlett Johansson, she's got, like, nice, like, full, luscious lips. I have a generous mouth. <laughs> Oh man, Julia Roberts, interesting. Yeah, yeah. That fades in the show of generous mouths. Um, yeah, yeah. No, it was just a generous mouth to me was such a sexual thing, and I oh, don't yeah. think it's meant to be sexual, mm. but it kind of is. Like anytime you're describing is. a woman's mouth, there's, yeah, I don't know, but mm-hmm. anytime a, a straight man looks at a woman and like is like her mouth though, it gets a little sexual. <laughs> a little bit, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the, yeah, Gina Davis. Oh my God. Priyanka Chopra, y'all are naming some gorgeous human beings. Yeah, yeah, and now David is like, mm, yes, a generous mouth. I see it now. <laughs> I would, I just would never use that to describe a human. No, it's a little weird. Yeah, um, I think that I would get smacked in my generous mouth if I were to say that to a woman. Hey, girl, you we got sh- a generous we named mouth. This girl. episode, generous mouth. Um, but yeah, so Perrin goes to bed. Uh, yeah. Hmm. Mm. So uh, he he sets up in his room, puts all his crap away. Oh no! Wait, before that. Mm-hmm. Oh no! Wait, I'm sorry, that is in this chapter. Um, sorry, I thought we were still on thirty three. No, I moved 34. out. We're, we're, no, this is thirty four now. We're thirty four. Okay. Cool. So in chapter thirty four, Perrin uh, realizes he needs to have a conversation with Moraine. So he busts yes. in, or no, he he wants to have a conversation with Lan. So he busts yeah. in and he sees Moraine naked. Oh, I don't know if she's naked, but she's in a robe. That it's she implied has to, like, that she's like. Whoop! <laughs> And he's like, oh, 
I yeah, he probably definitely like saw a little more of Marine than he like meant to. She she takes it like a pro. Yeah, she's like, yes. She's like, can I help you? Yeah. Do you like, knock, boy? It's like I thought uh, Lan would be in here. I honestly think it's one of those situations where Perrin, Perrin's mental thought is, I didn't realize Moiraine was a woman. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I, I feel like he views her in such a way yeah, that uh-huh. he was like, oh, no, Moiraine's room is where we go to, like, plan things. It's not where a woman sleeps. Yeah, yeah. And I think that this is one of those first moments where he's like, oh, no, wait, she's also a woman. Oh, I've messed up. Yeah. Uh, uh, L- is Lan here? Lan's not here? Okay. I am, I'm going to go. I'm going to go now. Bye. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was very funny because Moraine is just like, yeah. And Perrin's like, uh, um, I was wanting to talk to Lan, but uh, yeah. okay, bye. <laughs> like, um, so he, he leaves the inn and he goes to free Gaul. Mm-hmm. We don't know his name's Gaul yet, but we will learn that his name's Gaul. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And what I found really weird about this is he's like, God, the inn is so busy. And then he goes outside and he's like, the street is just as busy as the inn. And then he goes like a block and there's nobody. Yeah. I was like, what? If you want it to be a quiet night on the streets, Robert Jordan, why not just write that the street was quiet? Yeah. But, like, he literally writes in the chapter, he's like, the street was just as busy as the inn. And I was like, this seems like a bad time to go on a secret mission. Yeah. I'm like, okay, all right, that's a choice. (laughs) Yeah, it's a choice. Who knows what Perrin would have done if he had actually talked to Lan. But if you go a couple of blocks, you know, Mm -hmm. people cannot hear you fight and murder 12 white cloaks. Because that's not loud. Yeah, yeah. I was like, how did nobody like open their door? Yeah, nobody even notices. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm, but and it's only weird if everyone was in the inn, it wouldn't be weird. It's only weird because Robert Jordan writes the streets were as busy as the as the inside of the inn. Yeah. So there are like he writes that there are people outside, and then no one hears the fight go down, which I, I mean, just Zarina, found to be. Zarina is there, so yeah, of course, because she's a stalker. Yeah, um, she's friends with the monster that's under her bed. Uh. So Perrin, um, Perrin breaks the cage. Yeah. Because he is. He's like, oh, this thing is really bull. crappy made. He's yeah. like, why would you like? He fully critiques the worksmanship of this cage, and it's like, oh, you know, if you're gonna make something, at least do it well. Like, I, I love, I love that so much. It was such yeah. a nice touch on the character mm-hmm. that he is that we're getting that blacksmith in him. That is his character. That's what how he was raised. That's where mm-hmm. he, uh, that's where he goes immediately, right? mm Hmm. Um, V Drake says axes are known for being silent. I promise you, if you sink an axe into 12 men in a row, one, one of, of them, them will make a noise. To be fair, to be fair, the Aiel took care of a bunch of them, so. Yes, with his hands. That was cool. Hot. He took care of a bunch of men with his hands. Um, <laughs> so, uh, the Gaul, him and Gaul are talking, mm-hmm. and Gaul's like, I'm looking for, um, Rand. And Perrin's like, oh yeah, he's in tear. Yeah. I was like, wait, are you, what? <laughs> Perrin just straight up, I literally, Perrin freely offers Rand's location to this stranger. Perrin tells everybody everything in this section. <laughs> Li- like, literally, like, he cannot stop himself. And it is so weird, because normally that's, like, Matt's job. And what? Robert Jordan was like, well, oh, shit, I need some characters to find out some things. <laughs> so Perrin's going to be that guy this time around. Yeah, I, like, I, right. I felt... Because Perrin in book one and two is the is the quiet, slow thinker type, right? He gets he gets it he he gets there eventually, and then he kind of reveals what he has decided on saying. And then in He's this section, Perrin is suddenly just blurting. Like Zareen shows up, and Perrin is so flustered yeah. that he just starts saying everything, everything all the time. Literally, like he cannot he cannot stop himself yeah. multiple times in over the course of these next chapters, like. Um, and so the Aiel has a reaction to hearing about Rand and Tyr. Yeah. And he says that Rand being in Tyr will change them. Mm-hmm. And we hear more about the change later. Yes. What is that? I don't... Uh, I, I'm a, uh, my assumption right now is that it has something to do with them leaving the Waste. Like the, yeah. Because... Because I think the waste, like, is going to be that they can literally no longer live there, and so Rand is going to bring them out of it, and mm-hmm. that is that's going to be the change. Maybe that's my guess. I, I really don't know. Yeah, I. It, it it's weird, right? Because the book series has so much prophecy in it mm-hmm. that it's starting to like be hard to keep track of who has said who what has... about what event. Yeah, and what's been like kind of done already, like. And then add on top of that, you and I have prophesied so much 
that it's hard to remember what is crap that you and I came up with yeah. versus what is stuff from the book. Yeah. And I honestly am like, I'm at the point now where I'm like, there are so many prophecies and so many names for the same prophecy that I think are the same prophecy, but aren't to the people in the books. But yeah. like, I'm really trying to figure out like, the, and, and this is a new one. I was like the change. Okay. The, the Aiel change. I'm assuming it means it's going to change their culture mm -hmm. because we had the prophecy earlier about an Aiel holding a sword. So I have a feeling that but they can't hold swords. Right? right. Yeah. Until the change. And then after the change, I think they pick up swords against the dark one. You think they pick up so I don't know why they would need to pick up swords though. They are very proficient with other weapons. I, I, I don't know. I just I, I, I think that the the prophecy of the Aiel holding the sword is I, I think relevant to the change somehow. I think those two prophecies are related to each other in some way. Okay, fair enough. I and just maybe thought, that holding the sword is Rand. That's what I thought but, with yeah. Kalendor or or even with his hair marked blade, because because we, we he is Aiel, obviously. Um, I see, and this but, is the problem. I'm, I'm, I'm mixing up prophecies. It is an, a, a tinker with a sword, not an Aiel. Yeah. A tinker with a sword. Yes, it's a Tuatha on with a sword in that prophecy. Yep. Oh no, y'all are right. But no, nope, they're right. Oh okay. Yeah. I'm, mix, I'm, I'm mixing things up, and this is my point. There is so There's much so prophecy; many. it is hard to keep track. A little bit. Yeah. I need a like, uh, you know, uh, the, Char the the Charlie Day uh, image that's famous from. Um, it's always sunny where he has the conspiracy wall with all the red yarn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need a red yarn wall yeah. in our house stat for, for this. Wheel of Time specifically. Uh, Alex Yakovlev. Uh, Yakovlev. I think I got that right. Alex Yakovlev. Thank you for the super chat. Uh, that's why it's essential to reread the series right after you finish it. <laughs> Prophecy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally yeah, 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 yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have time to read this twice right now in my life. Yeah. Um, so the white cloaks come. They crash into the the town center here. And the Aiel goes, like, full-on ninja and just starts, like, jabbing people in the throats with his open hit hand, yeah. which is la rad. So cool. I re... I, this this scene, please put this in the show. That, yeah. And Aiel... And it's not that expensive, right? There's no. not a lot of people in it. There's just the, the fight choreography for it. But, like, I want this scene. Well, and I think the best fight choreography in season one is the Aiel on Dragon Mount scene. Mm. I think that's the best fight choreo in the whole season, right? I agree. And I so wholeheartedly agree with that. Yeah, yeah. If, if if bring in whoever choreographed that fight and do this do something like that here. I think that this is this scene is so cool. It's cheap. They can easily do this in the show. Mm -hmm. And it's really fun. Perrin goes full young bull again. Yeah. And he just starts cutting people down with that axe. Yeah. And then, my favorite part about it is that he leaves. So so they win, obviously. Mm -hmm. Taviran. They're not gonna lose a fight. Yeah. Uh, and Gaul's like, all right, I'll see you later. And Perrin's like, all right, I'm going to head back to the inn. And then he takes a couple of steps, looks at his axe, and he's like, oh, there's a lot of blood on this. Um, and he bends down and wipes his axe on the dead body. Yeah. So that it's clean, and then he leaves. Yeah, it's like, all right, all right that's the choice. Um, and yeah, he's he thinks that he, he sees the woman, the yeah. shadow of the woman again. He's like, ah, oh, damn it, somebody saw me. Um, but uh, yeah, the other thing that was in... Uh, this chapter is that they find out that Mazima is like on the other side of the world screaming to people that Rand is the dragon reborn. Well, and it's they, they're the ones who told him to go to Gildan and to wait there. Yeah. And so, of course, he goes to Gildan and is just like, you all shall bow before my lord Rand. Yeah. The beast will serve him. And I was like, oh, my God. And everyone's like, oh, my God, Mazima. She's. Christ. Like I, 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 Moiraine is like, I'm gonna skin him alive, and I'm yeah. like, yeah, girl, I bet yeah. you will. Yeah, yeah, I bet you will. He freaking deserves it. He's a dumbass. Uh, so yeah, so oh, Sam Parfait, thank you for that super thank chat. You for the super chat. The downside to writing books you, with usually two or more years between each book. Oh, yeah, yes. seriously. Um, so uh, ran or uh, so Perrin sees a girl, same girl. She's looking at him, so he runs down that alleyway. To try and find her. And who does he find? Not the girl. Lan. It's Lan. A boy. Lan. I think that Zareen and Lan are the same person. <laughs> yes. Because yeah. they have scenes together. This is how Lan is seducing Perrin. I've been calling this since season one. No, you. No. I'm kidding. Uh, Lan is like, dude, did you did you have to kill all the white cloaks? Yeah. I mean, I get it. You had to save the Aiel. Whatever, let's, uh, we're, we're leaving now. All right, we're Thanks, getting out of Aaron. here. And poor Loyal is like, oh, they have a wood sung bed here. He and finally he has, has a bed his size and I he's know. like, he doesn't even get to lay down. Stay for one night. 
God damn it, Perrin. Let Loyal have a good night's rest. Can you not just save the ideal in the morning? Yeah, just like yeah. s- get your eight hours in, wake up at like four, go to bed early. Yeah, yeah Get your eight yeah. hours in, wake up at like 4 a.m., save him then. Exactly. You know what I mean? There Poor might Loyal. be fewer white cloaks, white cloaks on the street. He really chose no, I- like prime, like people being out drunk which is when the white cloaks are probably at their most alert time yeah. to go save the ideal. He should have waited till like three o'clock in the morning. It was really interesting. I thought before we get to Zareen later on, I thought that she was a white cloak spy and that's why they showed up. Because she saw him in the end and was like, oh, the big shoulder dude. Yeah. And maybe that is what happened. Maybe that is why they just so happened to be there going towards the inn that Perrin was staying at. She might still be a spy. She might still be a spy. But yeah, it, it did definitely seem a kind of a coincidence that the White Cloaks just showed up in time. Mm-hmm. Um, so, to be, yeah. They're out patrolling, though. Like, I don't think that they're cavorting in an inn somewhere, right? Yeah. Um, so, uh, Loyal, uh, Loyal admits, as they're saddling up their horses, that he's starting to like adventure. Yeah. And then he he's like, I have to like adventure. I'm writing a book about it. And Perrin's like, come on, bro. And he's yeah. like, all right, I'm having a good time. Let's yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so Let's go. They go down to the docks and they catch a ship. And Jay Madara is the captain. He's like, oh, fine, whatever. Just don't be a pain in my ass. Every time we find a ship, I'm just like hoping. Bail Doman. It's Bail Doman. I think Every that, time. I, I was hoping we were going to see him Ilian, but they, we'll get to Ilian. Yeah. Um. So uh, Perrin can... Oh, uh... There's a weird note I wrote. Uh, so as they're pulling away, they're pulling away from the docks, and we get this girl. There's a random girl who's been stalking Perrin for two full chapters now. Mm-hmm. She comes a- running at that boat, and she leaps on board, yeah. and she's like, I would like to come with you. And the captain's like, uh, okay. And no one thinks it's weird. Yeah, like throws herself onto a moving boat. I was like... This is very sus. Like, why? Who? What? Well, and Matt and Tom did the same thing like three chapters ago. People are just tossing themselves on boats. I, yeah, I didn't realize it was that easy. Like, feel do you like know I... how hard it? No, 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 not easy. Do you no, know how hard I mean. it is to leap aboard a ship while it is moving? That's what I mean. And yet everybody seems to do it. And everyone like, rolls nat twenty on their dexterity check. There's no like, you need a gangway. And they, like, and maybe they're not moving. Maybe they haven't fully, like, really, you know, p- pulled away in any way. But like, every time they're like, it started to move, and I was like, that means the gangway is pulled up onto the boat. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, that means that like there isn't a connection between the dock and the boat, and it's a ship with like floors, which means it's pretty tall. I don't know how the hell she heaved herself off of the dock onto this thing. I don't know. Like, I legitimately like, I have no idea. <laughs> Yeah, Tom almost failed his check when he was getting on That's that boat. That's true. Well, to be Tom, fair, he had been drinking quite Well, a bit, and he's also, so. he's got that limp now. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. He, he rolls with disadvantage. He's no longer uh, proficient in athletics checks. Well, he was a bard. He was never proficient in <laughs> athletics checks. Um, so, uh, she's a smarty, is what I wrote. I don't know what that's in reference to. She's a smarty. I just wrote, I, I wrote literally, she's a smarty. Um, and so, she, she Perrin pulls her aside. He's like, yo. Girl, are you following me? Girl, is you following me? And she's like, yes. Yes, I am. Yes, Hi. Am. <laughs> I am a hunter of the horn. Hi, I'm Mandarb. <laughs> and, and Perrin is like... Perrin cracks up as if this is the funniest joke. And I was like, I mean, she has, she has the same name as a horse, dude. I, it's not... It's, yeah. The, the writing is like, he's gasping for air so he can speak again. And I'm like, it's, like it's, it's not that funny. It's worth the chuckle. You know what I mean? But, like, yeah. I wouldn't be, like, wheezed about it. It, it. it reminded me of when Drax over laughs in the Guardians of the Galaxy movies. And it, and everyone's like, I'm like, the joke wasn't that Perrin funny. Perrin is Drax. Perrin is, Perrin is Drax. Those shoulders, Perrin. though. Those sh- <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. Um. No, it was very funny. And she's like, what? I don't get it. And he's like, that's Mandarb. And she's like, mm. <laughs> But then she she's like, oh, that horse also has the name Mandarb. I guess I'll change my identity. Yeah. She's like, oh, I don't go by Mandarb anymore because of a horse. I feel like she made up that name literally on the spot. Like you she, think so? Yeah. I f- no, I feel like she made her oaths in Ilian with that name. When she was in the square making her, like, commitment to the hunt for the horn, I feel like she was like, I will be Mandarb horn hunter. Yeah, I don't like the sounds of that. I don't know. Uh, to me, I just, I, I, I don't know why, but... I, I feel like it's something she's been thinking about for a long time, so I don't think it was a sudden decision. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Like, I feel like on the ride to Ilian, when she's like, ooh, she's like, I'm going to go make that oath. She's like, best, like, yeah. badass name that I can come up with? So her name is actually Zareen Bashir. Mm-hmm. Um, 
which is just really close to an ex's of mine's name, so that's fun. Um, and then uh, she's like, well, okay, fine. Well, maybe I'll be um, I'll be fail. Or fail. Fa- fa- I thought it was fail. 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 That's how I said it in my head. Um, I'm going to call but... her Fele in honor of Pele, the football player. Oh, it's like, I don't know who that is. You don't know who Pele is? Why would I know? Because he's like the greatest soccer player of all time. I couldn't name a single soccer player. I, wow, okay. He, But he's like famous beyond that. You know what I mean? Like he's like internationally ubiquitous in a way that it mm-hmm. does not matter. Okay, Fail. Uh, where, that's that's Fail? Cool. Yeah. Fiel. Fail. No, there, but there are people saying Fiel. Where? Right there. And there. But no, oh, no, that's an I. Messy. <laughs> <laughs> Fail by the audiobooks. All right, we'll go yeah. with Fail. Yeah. Um. Yeah, she's like, I'm, I'm gonna be Fail. You should be Captain. That means Falcon. And Perrin goes, Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, what is it? He literally stumbles or something. He like falls. She's like, you good? <laughs> He's just, he's so... <laughs> he's so... Like, I love him so much. Yeah. But he he is a lot in this section. He's all over the place. Yeah, he really is. He is, like, he is literally going through puberty for the first time, it feels like. Like, he can't, like... Oh, he is. We're going to get to how horny Perrin gets in this section later. And freaking Matt. They're both so horny. <laughs> this whole book is horny. Um. All right, so chapter 36. Um. I took a photo of this. Mm-hmm. I can't remember why. So let's read the photo, because it's probably important. Um, oh, this is one of my favorite quotes in this section. The top oh. of chapter 36, we get to one of my favorite quotes in this section. Mm-hmm. Uh, he is, uh, Perrin is thinking about um, Elias Machera. He's like, yeah, like that dude figured it out. But uh, he, he's thinking about his life and, and how he wants to live his life. And he thinks, but if you have bar stock to make a knife, you accept it and make a knife even if you would like a wood axe. No, my life is more than iron to be hammered into shape. Yeah. And I, I, my life is more than iron to be hammered into shape is such a beautiful sentiment that I really love in real life. Obviously, he's Tavirin, so that's going to be less of an option for him. Yeah, uh, yeah, for sure. He doesn't have much of a choice. (laughs) Yeah, in many ways, his life is iron to be hammered into shape, but by the wheel, or grinded, I guess, because it's a wheel, but, um... I, I like I like that idea of like some sometimes people will be told in their life, especially if you come from a community where there is like <clears throat> a local economy, that there is an expectation that you're going to participate in that. You were born a baker's daughter, you're going to become a baker, and yeah. that is like the life that is set out before you. And you know, we've been telling stories for millennia, literal millennia of people rebelling against their parents and going and doing their own thing. Mm-hmm. And I just thought that this was a really beautiful way to write that in a sentiment that just really struck me. Yeah, no, I think that 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 part actually stood out to me as well. I, I, because I I feel bad Mm -hmm. because I know that unfortunately Perrin kind of like is is being shaped for the wheel's purposes. Like we know in this world that like fate is is a thing. You you can't really like you you can kind of do your own thing, but the pattern is going to do what it's going to do kind of regardless of like what you want, especially for Tavern. Mm-hmm. And I, yeah, I just, I, I felt a lot of sympathy and I, I felt kind of badly. Um, I just want to say, uh, Metheny, I'm really sorry that that super chat did not come through. Uh, it looks like you got the cancellation notice um, and everything. So I'm, I'm happy for what? that. But yeah, Metheny apparently tried to send a super chat and it um, didn't come through. There was a problem with it. So I'm, I'm really oh, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry, Metheny. That that. I, yeah, obviously, I, I, I don't know We're why that could be. What? We're getting demonetized. YouTube is like, there's too much smut in this. Uh, we're going to shut down any kind of, uh, any any monetary value that comes to the stream. We're, yeah, we're shutting it down. If you'd like to benefit us financially, go to HelloFresh.com and use the code PogSE3330 and get 16 free meals and three free treats. Heck yeah. Now back to the show. Um, <laughs> so Perrin goes to bed. And you know what happens when Perrin goes to bed? Mm-hmm. He dreams. Yeah. Well, and they're on a they're on a ship, so he's like, "Oh, no wolves around. I can actually get like a good night's sleep." <laughs> and I was like, "Ah, oh, oh, you idiot!" Um, sure. Hopper shows up immediately, and Hopper's mm-hmm. like, "Dude, come on, y'all. This chapter might be the rest of the show. We might have to just skip the rest of the show and put it into next week." Matheny, thank you so much for <gasps> that super chat. Thank you. And shout out to our awesome mods, dude. Seriously, yes. 
Shout out to our awesome mods. Seriously, give some mod, give the mods some love in the chat. Please. Yes. Um, F's in the chats for. I mean, uh, not that one. What's what? What? No. F to pay respects. To pay, yeah, if they're dead. You can pay respects to the living. <laughs> um, this chapter might literally take us an hour. Yeah. So buckle up. Um, Hopper leads Perrin. Mm-hmm. Because Hopper can fly now. Yeah, he's literally like, oh, yes, I can now fly like the birds. And he like, like we watch him like soar up into the air at some point, And we're like, what? Hopper leads him to Baalzaman meeting with Baalzaman's minions. Yeah. And I was like, wait, so they can, Perrin can just spy on the bad team? This feels, yeah. this feels OP. Yeah. Perrin is the most valuable player at this point. Literally. Um, And Baalzaman is like, you were supposed to stop the boy from leaving Tarvalon. Murders the Tarvalon dude. So, yeah, one of the guys. There's like a bunch of like his minions there. And it and seems he's... like he has a minion in every city. They're basically like, and that's the one from Ilion, and that's the one from Andor, and that's the one from Camelim, and that's yeah. the one from Calgary, and that's the one from New York City. And Yeah, it's it's one of those things where they like, he, he I'm sure he has more minions. Mm -hmm. like, oh, I'm yeah, sure yeah, yeah. He's more than one, but like he has his eggs in every basket. Basically. Hopper is now in the Matrix. Hopper is Neo confirmed. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I would watch that. That crossover. This is sure. sort of... Actually, in many ways, this is sort of a fantasy version of the Matrix. That's cool. Like I the like dream that thought. World. Yeah. Um, so, but Alzaman is, like, berating his dudes. And he's like, guys, get, get your shit together or I'm going to kill you. <laughs> and you will not wake up. Yeah. Yeah, he's like, uh, one of you failed me, so you're dead, and the rest, you better do your jobs, mm -hmm. or this is what's gonna happen. Uh, there has been a, some debate. Some people telling me to stop calling things the dark, because it is the shadow. Mm. And there have been people in the comments going, nerdy, it's not the dark, it's the shadow. Baal Zaman is the lord of the dark, so I get off my dick. <laughs> stop, know, stop telling me it's not the dark, when the book keeps telling me it's the dark. <laughs> Yeah, there's a yeah. I feel like they're pretty they're pretty similar. So, uh, well, so and in this it. whole section, he keeps we being like, the "I'm name. the Lord of are are you are you do you respond to the Lord of the Dark? Do you follow the Lord of the Dark?" And I'm like, no one is even saying the word shadow. Uh, well, huh. but Alzaman is constantly saying like, "I am the Lord. You follow the Lord of the Dark." And people in the, and I keep saying, yeah, the, it's the dark side. And people are like, no, it's the shadow it's side. It's not the dark side. <laughs> I've just been catching a lot of comments the lately. The side. About the shadow. And I, it's, it's both. They're the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, guys. It's, it's just going to be, it's going to be both. We're going to interchange them. So I want to, I want to say I'm sorry. This is where I have to make a public apology to my wife. Oh. I hate doing this. Oh, no. Wow. I hate saying these words. Mm -hmm. You were right. Daddy B's alive. You're welcome. Am I happy about it? No. Do I accept it? I, I have to. You have to. to. You have no choice. Guys, I want someone to... I, you can clip on YouTube now. I need someone to clip that. My husband said I was right. So I, I, I want to preserve that. Yes, you're yeah. right. Baalzaman, I've been saying that Baalzaman is dead since he since the end of the Great Hunt. Yeah. Daddy B lives. Yeah. I was like, there's no way. Like, like yeah, yeah. Yeah. And there, there he is. And he kills one of his dudes. And um, then Lanfear shows up. <laughs> yeah. She's like, what you doing in my house? And yeah. he's like, your house? Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, this is your house now? You know what else? I was correct twice. You want to know why? I don't, but uh -huh. yeah. What? Yeah, because Lanfear said that she was trapped and now has reign over her domain again, which I think still is Rand freeing her from the weird portal stone world. She says yeah. she was trapped. No, that that that's possible. Yeah, you're. I, I'm not saying that you're a hundred percent right yet. But like, it's possible. But that it's I'm definitely probably possible. Right. <laughs> but it also could mean that she got out before that, and she yes, yeah, she could have. That is also possible. But just based on what we know of Lanfear, that's kind of the easiest connection that we can make. Uh, Golden Eyes uh, says I might want to get used to apologizing. I'm Canadian, so I'm it's in our blood. a professional. Uh, yeah, yes. professional apologizer. Do not disparage a Canadian at apologizing. We are better at it than you, and I'm sorry for being so aggressive in saying that. <laughs> um, so yeah, Lanfear shows up and is like, yo, Dreams, this is my spot. This is my spot. And Baalzaman yeah. is like, I am the great lord of the dark. And Lanfear's like, yeah, okay. He's like, do you still follow the great lord of the dark? She's like, yeah. 
Yeah, sure, whatever. Okay, whatever. Dude, yeah. I'm going to go tell the dark one that you're doing your own thing. And she's like, yeah, okay, whatever. Like, just get out of my face. Sure. Whatever, dude. I want this scene so bad. Oh, me But too. I want to play Lanfear in it. <laughs> because I will be the sarcastic bee that this needs. Yeah. And I'll just, like, with give me a long black wig. Yeah. Give me, like, a, one of those, like, silicon chests with just massive bazoombas. Great. We'll get you, like, a, the most beautiful white wedding dress you've ever seen. And I'll just be there, like, yeah, sure, dude. You know, Balsamon, you know what? Yeah. I respect you. I 100%. Would I lie to you? Would I, I, would I lie? You. Yeah, it's this weird, like, dream world with, like, mirrors and stuff. Yeah, Which cool. then comes back later, so I feel like it was important, I guess, to, like, mention. But, yeah, there's, like, mirrors everywhere, and Perrin's just, like, above. Just, yeah. like, watching from above. Yeah, and it's it, it's a dangerous place for me because my narcissism would be, like, peaking. I would just be looking at myself in all the mirrors. I would be going to different mirrors to see if, like, they warped to my in different ways. You know what I mean? Like, I'm like, ooh, that's, like, a tall... I look very tall in that mirror. And, like, ooh, I look muscular in that mirror. And I would just be, like, walking around. Oh Lanfear's like, Balsamon, we're, we're talking. And I'm like, give me a second. <laughs> give me a second. I need to check which angle is the best. Yeah. Um. So, uh, Perrin is like, oh, uh, my God, those are Forsaken. I need to go. And so Hopper leads him away from the Forsaken. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then Perrin runs into Rand. And Rand is like to murder him. fighting an army of fades. Yeah. Like Rand is just m- killing everything in sight. Yeah. Rand is apparently just openly channeling constantly now. Yeah, yeah. No, like, yeah. Why? No chill. Why do you think we didn't get much Rand POV so far in this book? Do you think it's because it's hard to write the descent into madness? That, and I think that it would just get tedious after a while. Because it's very samey. Yeah. yeah, yeah right? That's like, her. like he is not in his right mind. And, like, reading that for mm. pages and pages and pages would be difficult. Mm-hmm. I, I like the choice that we don't have Rand's POV at this point. Even though I think later on, when we get back to Rand's POV, we will gain some insight as to this time that he was on his own. Fair. That's my guess. Uh, so Perrin wakes up. Uh, or no, so Rand, uh, Rand sees Perrin, unlike the Forsaken. He's like, he sees him and he's like, you burn you. And he li- he, he liter- literally burns him. Yeah. There's like a little like cigarette burn in his chest. Yeah. Um, I was about to make the darkest joke and I'm not going to say it out loud. Um, wow. Uh, oh, wow. I cannot believe my brain just went there. Whew. Whew. Um, so uh, Perrin wakes up and Perrin's like, oh, God, you know what I need? I, I, this one, I, I actually do need to go tell Moraine about. He's like, I haven't been telling her about my dreams, but yeah. if Lanfear is out there, I, I would be, it would be irresponsible of me. And I was like, it's been irresponsible of you the entire time. Yeah, but I'm glad we finally got to the point where Perrin is So he's like, yo, Moraine, here's, here's everything you need to know. And she's like, dude, those reds would... Cut it your would balls off. Kill you. You a dead man. Yeah. Do not tell many people about this. They would try to they would try to gentle you so hard. I honestly hate though how dismiss- dismissive Maureen is in this scene. She's a like a thousand percent. Yeah, okay. And Perrin's like And she's like, eh, I'll tell you what I want to tell you. Well, and, and like, then a couple chapters from now, she gets so upset that Perrin doesn't tell her things about Zareen's knowledge. And I'm like, of course he doesn't. Moraine, you, you expect people to work for you and you, she's a bad boss and people do not quit jobs. They quit bosses. And she is the kind of boss that you quit because yeah. it's not a two way relationship. Yeah. And it, what's interesting about it in terms of it being a book is that Moraine isn't infallible. Like, sometimes yeah. I feel like Dumbledore is, like, an infallible... Until the very end when you realize how badly he messed up. Yeah. Dumbledore is this, like, almost, like, perfect character. Gandalf is this almost, like, perfect leader of the group, right? Yeah. Moraine yeah, yeah. isn't that. Because she keeps failing at the community building of their little quartet. Yes. And at, at bringing people in to feel like they can, like, trust her with information. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Trevok, thank you so much for that super chat. Super chat. This shows Rand being tortured in his dreams, even being deprived of restful sleep. Ever, I have a feeling they're been. just going to cut all of it. So you, so... Uh, oh, this shows, oh my God. This yeah. shows Rand being tortured in his dreams, ever being yes. deprived of restful sleep. Yes. I don't sleep, so no. So yes, you have been always deprived of restful No, but I don't have like, I don't have, no, because I don't have like, um... <laughs> I don't have dreams that I, like, remember. That's true. Nerdy doesn't dream. 
like I go to bed and I turn off and then I turn back on and nothing. I, I don't feel time. Sh- I, I don't feel any sense of time between being awake and being asleep and being awake again. Yeah. So I, um, she gets really frustrated because I wake up at the same energy that I go to bed with because I don't have any sort of like dip down into dreams and coming back up. It just is like a second it's and I'm awake. It's so weird for yeah. me because in the morning I wake up and it takes me like 45 minutes. I'm so groggy. Yeah. I can't move. And like you are just... You're, you have on and you have off and it, it's, it's just wild to me. Yeah. And like people talk about like, they can, they're like, oh my God. And they'll be like, I was dream I was like, I, it felt like I was asleep for like seven hours. I have no concept of that. Like I have no, it does not feel like any time passes. I am just out and I'm back. Yeah. It's, it's like blinking. It's very weird. <laughs> yeah. And so I wake up like, Hey, what's up? And I try and be quiet. Cause I know that she's like waking up and she's frustrated, but I like literally wake up. Yeah. <laughs> Ellen says nerdy is a robot. Yeah, I kind of just like it's like someone turns me on. Uh, Hunter, was that Hunter? Uh, Hua yeah. Ryun, thank you for that super chat. Thank you, Goat so much for the Vienda. Super chat. Now a couple more coded characters. I don't know what Goat Vienda is, but I'm ex- oh uh, a Vienda Goat Vienda. Dope, dope, oh got oh oh gotcha gotcha. Yep yeah that took me a second as well. Thank you so much for the super chat. Um, but I also like I also only sleep like four or five hours a night. Yeah, like he doesn't sleep much, and sometimes he just doesn't sleep at all. I didn't go to bed it... till like six thirty in the morning. Yeah, I I went to bed like five hours ago, and I was up at eight thirty. Yeah, no, that sounds like uh, that uh, that sounds like my nightmare. Yeah, <laughs> I I get eight hours a week. So uh, Perrin goes to talk to um. Uh, Zareen, or uh, no, no, so uh, Moiraine tells Perrin mm-hmm. that Zareen is a Saldean name that would mm-hmm. be given to a pretty girl that is not meant to do anything adventurous with her life. No, yeah. She's meant to sit on pillows and be looked at. Yeah, and I was which like, is why oh, I don't Zareen like that. is like, uh, no, no to this name and no to that life. Yeah, I get it. And Yeah, oh God, yeah. Well, and what's so fun is that we, it, it ties into my favorite quote from last chapter, right? Where Perrin says, my life is not iron to be, or no, from the beginning of this chapter. Yeah. My life is not iron to be worked over. Mm-hmm. And then at the end of the chapter, he doesn't realize it, but he and Zareen are going through the same like emotional journey. And they just have, yeah. they're oh, going to yeah. get there together and it's going to be really cool, I think. Yeah, absolutely. They're it's going to they're gonna take some time, but I'm excited to see them actually like on the same side. So the chapter ends with uh, Rand uh, getting his half chapter catch up with what's going on with Rand. Mm-hmm. Um, and he, Rand is like, you know what? I think that really was Perrin. I need to be careful. I think I almost really killed Perrin. Yeah. Which was an interesting moment of clarity for him because he didn't have the same moment with Egwene. So I wonder what it was about his interaction with Perrin that he, like, recognized it as actually being Perrin that he didn't have with Egwene previously. Hmm, interesting. Um, a woman rides up to him on a horse, and Rand cuts her head off. Yeah. And then kills her friends, lines up their bodies like a serial killer. And has them, like, kneel before him. And I was like... Okay. <laughs> I was like, this is... <laughs> Like killing, I was I was fine with him killing them. I get it. Like he's in danger, but like the way that he like the way that it describes him lining up their bodies, I was like, this no, is a, like, just leave them where they lie, dude. Like why are you? Yeah, I was like, why? Why are you spending the time? Why you need you need some sleep? Rand also uh... <laughs> now has a lightsaber. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he just has his own uh, laser blade. If it is a sword that is made of fire that can cut through a head, that can cleave a head off of a body, it so is a lightsaber. Say, yeah, no, I cannot, I will not fight you on that one. Rand 100%. is Anakin Skywalker. He's going to the dark side a little bit, but he's Anakin As Skywalker. long as we don't watch him kill a bunch of younglings, I'm okay with that. Uh, well. I mean, at least these weren't In a past children. life, he did murder his own children, so. Yeah, uh-huh. We're going to get to this, though, because I don't think that this actually happened. Really? Yeah. The killing of the merchant and her men, I don't think actually happened. Okay. Yeah. We're, when, we get to a se- we're, when we get to a section later in the book, in this section, I think that this is in Rand's head. And that this is him seeing something else happening. But it, that, that I do not think that Rand actually killed these people here. And okay. we'll get to when we get to it. Interesting. All right. Yeah. Um. But yeah, he he recreates the it, the the lightsaber specifically has a heron on it somehow. I want to see how they visualize that on the show because I don't know how you do that. Uh, it yeah. has a little fire heron. Yeah. yeah. Um. I don't think it's imagined or dreamed, Mike. I think that this 
event happens, I don't think that Rand does it. And we'll get into what I mean by that when we get to it. Because okay. we're not there yet. All right, all right, interesting. Chapter 37, we're with our girls. And our girls are growing on me, y'all. I love Nynaeve in this section so much. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like this section very much. And we'll get to, like, the thing that, like, kills me about it. Mm -hmm. um, and it's going to echo a complaint I had last week. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I, not the whole section. There's things about this section I don't like. There's things about this section I really do like. Yeah. Um, mostly the Aiel. Um, Egwene is on board the ship from the last section yeah. from last week. The girls are sharing a room because, um, you know, if you can share a room with two hot ladies, you share a room with two hot Why ladies. Why would you not? Yeah. And they're riding through Kyrian, and it's 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 bad. It's bad. Um, it's like, bad. Real real bad. Like people, uh, yeah, people are fleeing. Like people are starving. It's it's scary. And <clears throat> like I I. It, until this chunk of the book, I didn't really, like, think about it. I didn't really, like, realize what was happening. Um, I think that, like, sometimes we picture medieval battles as these, like, armies outside of a castle wall, right? And, like, the, the battle is kind of relegated to the armies outside of the castle wall moments. Because that's what we visualize in movies and TV shows. But, like, yeah. this, is, this is what a civil war in this time would look like. It's what civil war looks like now. The people who suffer the most are the small villages that are defenseless mm -hmm. as the army just comes through and burns everything to a cinder. Yeah. And at first I was like, is, is this Rand? And I was like, oh, no, no, this is the Civil War. This is just the Kyrians doing this to themselves. Yeah. And that's that's so sad. Yeah. And like, I, I respect the crap out of Elaine for being like, no, I'm not going to not feel this. This is awful. Yeah. yeah um, but I also true. understand Egwene's position of like, I cannot fully feel There's this. Nothing they can do. Yeah. You know, I can't, I can't fully open myself up to this because yeah. I, can't, I can't, otherwise I'm just going to what? Just do, should I just sit here and cry all the time for well, the things I cannot change? And the most messed up part of it is like, we know that this is all Tom's fault. <laughs> like one of our like characters from book one Who's hurting um, and like, you know, I'm not I don't saying... agree with that. I think that this would have happened. I, I think that this would have happened no matter what. I, I think that Tom, I think that Tom was definitely like an instigator in like when it happened. Yeah. Like he was the catalyst for it. But, but based on, based on the game of houses, when we get there in the last book, this was the, this was an inevitable end to the way that they play that game. This was always going to happen. It just yeah. happened earlier because the king killed, had, had Tom's girl killed. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, yeah. The, the king did have his girl murdered first. Like, Tom didn't just casually do something. Yeah. He got revenge for something the king did. No, for sure. I'm just saying that, like, the, this, these events are, in this moment, like, a direct result of what happens. And, like, mm -hmm. that just, yeah. that is tough. And I I don't, I wonder if we're going to have to get, like, if we're wondering if we're going to get Tom's perspective on coming to terms with that or not, or, like, I don't think so. what I, it means. I think Tom has already kind of acknowledged that he just assumed that this is where Kyrian was headed. I think that Tom is looking at it going, yeah, this is, this is, this is always the path this is going to go down. Yeah. And this is what happens when, po po poli po po when politics gets snipey. Right? Yeah. When politics becomes as divided. I mean, we're seeing this in like our modern times, right? We're seeing this in real life in a way that I don't like being able to compare to this moment in the books, right? Yep. Um, uh, Trevok says, village burning is reminiscent of RJ's time in Vietnam. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Thanks for pointing that out to me previously. Trevok, yes. thank you for the super chat. Thank you for that super chat. But uh, yeah, yeah, no, for it's, sure. It's, <clears throat> it, it, it is a tough situation, right? Like, what is happening? Because you're right. I think that it would have happened eventually. But we do know that, like, Tom is the one that, like, lit the fuse in it, in it, or... But Rand kind of lit that fuse first, right? Like, the the, the fuse was lit many times over. And so I you think, think that... that... you think that if Rand hadn't gone and seen Tom, that none of that would have happened? Well, yeah, because if Rand hadn't gone and seen Tom, then the king wouldn't have had Tom's girl killed, so the... Like, like yeah. you, you can play the, like, who is at fault and go back and back and back and back and back. The problem is that, like the the domino effect of history it goes back to the beginning of time because every domino yeah. in history is pushed by previous lives and by our parents and by our grandparents and by our great great grandparents yeah and so like you can never play dominoes there, there, there's never a beginning point for dominoes that we understand because all of our history mm -hmm. all of our understanding of humanity and who we are and how we interact with each other it all goes back to before recorded history exists right? yeah and i think that it is <clears throat> like this like these images are a really good way to kind of show the reader 
that like that hmm. like in how incredibly powerful like our main characters are even in a way that they may not necessarily understand you know how the Taviranness works and not in like a magical way but in like a literal like that we went like people are dying and starving lj deal says it's all because matt stole the dagger and like that's that's true right they wouldn't have gone on the quest the way that they did if it hadn't been for having to return to, to get the dagger back yeah yeah, it is, it is one of those weird things where, like, they are all kind of responsible for this in a way, which is wild to think about, but but they are. They're not and... responsible. But, but, but it's not about responsibility. Responsibility is you made a choice. Like, Tom is responsible because he made a choice that led to this. Yeah. Rand, they, their actions caused this, but they're not responsible for it. Because okay. it wasn't an active decision. They, they they didn't even think they were going to Kyrian when they set out to save Matt. They were just setting out to save Matt. Yeah. Like, to say they're responsible because in the wake of them saving their friend, uh, the ripple effect led to these other things. I'm not saying it's like they're... It's more Rain's fault. It's... Nynaeve believes that. Nynaeve does <clears throat> believe that. Um, Shall we move on to page 403? Well, yes, absolutely. Uh, we have to talk about this entire page. Because... Yeah. Uh, Egwene dreams. This section. This is chapter thirty-seven. Egwene has been wearing the Telaran Riyadh constantly, uh -huh. or she's going to Telaran Riyadh using the uh, Terangriel. Yes. Uh, and she's been dreaming about a lot of things. She dreamed about Rand holding a sword that blazed like the sun. We know what that is. Yep. Uh, we see uh, she sees Rand being threatened in a dozen ways, none the least of a, a bit real, and she sees him on a, a stone board. With people playing checkers, and he's dodging the checkers as they try and come down on his head. Yeah, that's a weird on-the-nose metaphor, but... Uh... Because the White Tower uh -huh. and the Dark One uh -huh. are playing the game of chess or checkers or whatever, whichever, maybe it's Go, I don't know. Um, <laughs> and they're, he's dodging. He's dodging. Yeah. He's like, oh my god, wait, wait, wait. Whoa. Um, and she's like, I don't know what that means. And then she's like, suddenly she's dreaming of Perrin with a wolf and a falcon and a hawk. Well, we've met the falcon. Met, yeah. Haven't met the hawk yet, maybe, unless we have. Um, of Perrin running from someone deadly and Perrin stepping willingly, or willingly over the edge of a towering cliff while saying, it must be done. I must learn to fly before I reach the bottom. Yeah, I don't know if that's a reference to like Hopper. Oh, yeah. he's. Oh, no. Perrin is going to learn how to fly in dreams. Oh, I was like, I'm sorry. What? Okay, in dreams. Perrin, oh, yes. Perrin is going to become dream spy. Yeah. I think Perrin is going, because it says here, um, uh, there, had one, there had been one dream of an Aeol. Obviously, that's already happened. Uh, a dream of Min Spring. Oh, uh, no, wait. The, someone talked about Perrin leading an army of wolves in one of the prophecies. I can't remember what section that was in. I uh -huh. think it might have been last week. Uh -huh. I don't think Perrin leads a real army of wolves. I think Perrin leads the army of all wolves, past, present, and future, in the dream, like world, in the dream world against, against... Baal Zaman at some point. Right. Or Lanfear, because she says that that's, like, her domain. Yeah, right? maybe. Because... I still think, I still think Rand is going to turn Lanfear. Mm, Although, I, I have a new, I have a new, I have a new prediction on who Rand's third girl is. I think we met Rand's third girl. Yeah? I think so. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, so then she dreams of Min springing a steel trap. Where is Min right now? Oh, Tarvalon. The uh, Tarvalon, yeah. 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 She had to go let the Emerlin seat know what's up. And dreams of Matt playing dice with Baal Zaman. And also Matt with an Illuminator, which we will see in this section. Yes, we do get to that, actually. Um. So she dreams of kings dying, queens weeping, battles raging, white cloaks ravaging the two rivers. She even dreamed of the Sanchen again. What, which of these stood out to you? <laughs> All of them? Every single one. This yeah. one page. I read this one page like nine times because I was like, oh my God, this is so many things. Yeah, they, there Yeah, there is a lot given to us, not in this chapter, but on this singular page. Because in the chapter, basically, they just, they get off the boat. They see what's <laughs> going on and they get off the boat. But this chapter is meant to give us all the dream stuff, which we also know that um, Egwene finally let Nynaeve and Elaine try the ring. Yeah, um, nothing really happened. It, yeah, they don't yeah. like... Like, they were not able to find out any useful information. So she's like, okay, well, I'll just do it myself then. Michael Baruta says, doesn't she say the Shanshan dreams are just her nightmares and ignores them? Yes. I think yeah. she says that, but she, she is that. wrong. 
Yeah, I don't think she is. A foul. I will. I will bet all of the money in our bank account that she, she interacts with the Sanchin again. Oh, there's yeah. no way. Oh yeah, a hundred percent. And that's the thing is now like dreams can't ever just be dreams. Like when yeah. Robert Jordan writes, "Oh yeah, that was probably just a nightmare." I'm gonna be like, "Nah, nah, bro. No, it's not. Not when it means something. Not when three of our main characters have prophecy dreams. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Rand, Perrin, and Egwene all have prophecy dreams." And sometimes yeah. they pop into each other's prophecy dreams. They're like, hey, girl, how you doing? And nice to see and you. And parents just like on the wall, like, hey, man, <laughs> I, this wolf tied me up. But how are you doing, girl? No, no, Perrin was holding his own chains. Oh, he was holding his own chains. Yeah, I pictured like, it differently because no, no. I'm a pervert. Um, I was like, yeah, Perrin. It's hot. Yeah. Mm-hmm, I like um, it. Those I don't mind when a man's though. tied up. Uh, so the, they run aground because of the mudflats. Um, yeah. And this is this gets a little confusing to me. Okay. Because Matt, I thought Matt left first, but the Matt, the ship Matt's on passes this ship in the later chapter. And so I thought Matt had left first, but it, it seems that Matt left Harville on second. Yeah, because they, the girls left in the afternoon. And then, and then Matt he left gambled all night, night and left in the morning. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was wrong. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm pretty <clears> sure anyways. Yeah. So the girls are like, well, we'll just walk. It's six miles <laughs> Yeah, we'll, just, we'll walk. just walk. We have feet. And then they're like, yeah, God, wouldn't it be crazy? They, they like step on the ground. They're like, they, they walk like, you know, a mile. And they're like, wouldn't it be wild if we were ambushed like right now? And then a woman pops up out of the ground and is like, hey, what's up? Yeah. Ambush. I was waiting for it. I was literally waiting for I was like, oh, my God, there's literally no way. Like, this is. It was just like the next. It was like the paragraph was literally like. And then uh, they talked about not being ambushed and were immediately ambushed because. <laughs> To yep. I guess. Um, and then we meet the Ayil. First, we meet Avienta. Avien- A- Avienda? Oh, well, uh, we do know for certain that Matt is being followed by a gray man. Egwene is like, oh, oh that's my dream. dream. Yeah, 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 she's like, I just realized my dream, what it means. I'm so dumb. But that, but this, that could be the gray man that he killed. That doesn't necessarily mean, because some of her dreams we've already seen happen. Like, Matt uh, ran with the flaming sword we've already seen happen. I think he's probably... Oh, there's probably others, but, like, yeah. I'm just saying, like... <clears throat> yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. So, Avienda... Mm-hmm. Um, Avienda is clearly important. Do you think that's the third... Yeah. Rand's third lady? I would love that. I think that Rand having an Aiel wife... Yeah. ...makes sense. This uh, this chapter immediately brings up that Avienda is comfortable with Lady Levin. Yeah. She's comfortable in a threesome. Yeah. Group stuff. <clears throat> definitely A-OK. This is, this chapter is very much about threesomes. Yeah. And I was like, oh. It's like, I, great. I'm into it. <laughs> like, they're, fr- they're, okay. So basically, Avi pops up and she's like, hi, y'all are, uh, I, I said, I, right? Our friend is hurt. Can you come yeah. heal her? And Nynaeve, Nynaeve, being Nynaeve, is like, yes, yeah. I will come heal. I will come mm-hmm. heal her. So then, Rather than talk about, like, injuries or, like, serious t- subjects, yeah. while they're walking to go kill their friend, the girls are like, oh, you guys should, you guys should, you guys should be pillow friends. Okay, are, so, Wait, so you two, you, you two are really close, but you don't have sex? So, yeah, so this part is, like, kind of confusing to me because I was, I don't know what's confusing about it. No, no, because I was reading it, and, and so the Aiel are like, oh, you guys are, like, so, so, so they're like, we're first sisters, mm-hmm. and then she's like, are you guys first sisters to Egwene and Elaine? And they're like, oh, well, like, we are, like, basically best friends. Like, we're sister from another mister kind of vibe, yes. right? Like, family. And they're like, well, you should speak the words in front of the wise ones and just become first sisters. But I, but does first sisters mean that, that th- that's not necessarily pillow friends. That just means that they're going to defend each other's back like family. I think they just also happen to be... I, I, I don't know. I was very confused because they definitely were talking about how they shared men. Yeah. Like that is like explicitly said. Oh, you know, I wouldn't say we don't like men. We just go with them together. And I was like, yeah, okay. I mean, they, they explicitly are saying that like we like men. We just yeah. don't we don't sleep with men. But I alone. don't think first sisters has to be sexual. I think it's 
familial. Oh, I'm but not it's saying weird that it is familiar, familial, and also sexual. I'm not and saying that like, it has to be sexual. Oh, okay. I'm saying in this instance, it is sexual because then Egwene goes, "Oh my God!" Egwene is literally picturing sharing Rand with Elaine. Sharing Rand with Elaine, and I was and like, like mm-hmm. "That's not me mm-hmm. putting that in the book. Yeah, I am yeah, not yeah. saying that. Like, it, I, it's not that it's not there, and I'm making that up. No, that no, is no. explicitly what Egwene says she is thinking about yes. after having this conversation. Yes. This section of the book makes it sexual. Yes. I can totally understand that there are first sisters who are not sexual. Okay, okay, okay. I'm saying that, like, this this section of the book is the girls literally say, like, oh, no, we like men. We just sleep with them together. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. that's that's literally what she says. She's like, what it, do you it, mean it we don't like men? That doesn't even necessarily mean that the Ayol, the women sleep with each other. Like, there, are, you can yeah. have a threesome where, like, the man is in the middle and he, like, you know you know, does his business one at a time. Yeah. It just, the, the book says, like, they don't sleep with men alone. They only have threesomes. That, yeah. That's not me putting it on the book. That's that's explicitly what the text says. Yeah. Yeah. I Yeah. And I was <clears> like, <throat> wow, this is, this book is so horny. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I just, I it was not something that I was expecting. But, but, but that's, but... but that's in all of this, right? Like, I think that Robert Jordan was a fan of polyamory because yeah. the green Aes Sedai have multiple warders. Yep. And this, and Rand is going to have multiple women. Like, the, anyone who's trying to argue that there isn't some, like, acceptance of polyamory in this book series, yeah. I, I don't think that I can agree okay, with you. We need the book, because Chad is saying that we're wrong, and we literally <laughs> read this together. Uh, what chapter are we in? 38? Or um, it's in 38. I think. Yeah, I believe it's 38. I think, like, halfway through, because... um. Because, yeah, they're just, like, walking and, like, chatting about Aiel stuff. Um, and I remember, I'm pretty sure it's, like, in the top, like, third of a page on the right-hand side. Because I literally was remembering it, and I was, like, this is, uh, this is very steamy. <laughs> um, um, I'm trying to find the exact quote. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's like Egwene. Egwene did not know whether to laugh or blush. She kept having an image of her and Elaine sharing the same man. Yeah. No, that is only for first sisters who are maidens of the spear, isn't it? Um, but yeah. it's before that. Um, is it before that? I thought it was right afterwards. Or maybe no, it was maybe maybe it was right before it. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, as is proper for first sisters who are maidens, we guard each other's backs, and neither will let a man come to her without the other. Yeah. I would not say we do not care for men. I don't know how you can read that any other way. That is literally... We, we only have sex with men if we're together. Yeah. We like men. We like men a lot. We guard each other's backs and neither yeah. will let a man come to her without the other. Yeah. I I don't... I don't know what other interpretation that could be. Yeah. There's no, like... <laughs> It's li- it's literally said. Neither will let a man come to her without the other. It's not even a like one at a time. Like we both have to be there. Yeah. Explicitly, we have to be there. Yeah. I'm like, all right. I like, just I don't I don't know what else that could be. Yeah. This is uh yeah. It is like very like explicit. Uh, Sam Parfait, thank you for the uh thank super, you for chat. super chat. He's definitely polyamorous. She meant marriage, no sex. What marriage are you guys in? What? Who? <laughs> the ma- marriage generally equals sex unless you're asexual, but she it's says that they both we wed like him, men. Not they sleep together with him. That That's basically synonymous. I, I don't know how to tell you all this, but when people get married... They generally... <laughs> they generally... Not always. And there are ace, there are ace, there are ace, ace people, people out, there. out there. And I totally respect if that is you... I 100% support your lifestyle, and I hope that you live a very happy life with many happy relationships. Yeah. There there is too much polyamory in these books for you to tell me that that is not what Robert Jordan means. Yeah, we know that Rand is literally going to have three women. That, guys, I don't know how to tell and you this. And the green Aes Sedai are doing the same thing that the Aiel women are. Yeah. Like, it is literally, like, They're there are literally so like many up gangbang there. gangbang culture. And, like, that's no, fine. No, 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 What? That's not, no, let's not go there. That's a, that is a different thing. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying it's that it's. a green Aes Sedai, she's got a bunch of warders, and she's I am not herself. saying that it's lascivious. I'm not saying that it's a bad relationship structure. I support polyamory. Like, yeah. I'm just saying that, like, it is clearly stated that they, 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 they form these units together that yeah. that's 
I, I don't know. I, 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 yeah, it's, it seems very clear that that's what they're talking about. Yeah, here. I, yeah, I don't know how to, like, break it to you guys. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, okay. Nim by any other name says you can have multiple partners without being in a threesome. You can have a thruple that doesn't have threesomes. But it literally says you but cannot why would come you to not? one. It says you cannot come to one without the other. At well, no, but that means marriage, and that's fine. I'm just saying that, like, give me, like, three years of that. The three of them are going to be in the same bed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's you not know, you're not going to have a schedule. Yeah. Who sleeps with who when? No, you just you pile up, you have a good time. Yeah. Especially if you're all, like, living together. Yeah. This, also, yeah. like, the thing about this is that you would have to understand the Aiel would not have our ideas of what is proper. Yeah. This is, this is like, after the world fell apart. Their yeah. sexual politics would be entirely different from our own. Yeah. And so I think that trying to put, like, contemporary ideas of what these relationships would be onto a culture that is so far removed from ours... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, is, is just not... I don't think that's beneficial to reading of the I.O. I yeah. think that they would probably be more open to a, 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 a thruple relationship like that than mm -hmm. we are now. Yeah. Uh, Rickard, thank you so much for the super chat. Thank you for the super I chat. I think this is a read and find out. You will learn more about their culture in later books. Yeah, but part of learning about our culture is going to be that Avi is going to be one of Rand's three wives, and she's going to be the one that pushes yeah. the other two to be okay with it because she's like, "Well, yeah, you're my first sisters. We this is we're first sisters. This it's is fine. how we do it." Yeah. Okay. Anyway, we have to move on. Yeah. We have to move on. First sisters, threesomes, whatever. Nynaeve. <clears throat> uh, Nynaeve is tries going to, to heal Dailan. Yes. Yes, and has to like make herself angry being like how can people tear up a body so so that she can get <laughs> the power to heal her my niece has the worst bedside manner of any doctor ever, ever. this is just, ah, she's just like she hulks out why did you get hurt yeah and the poor girl's like i'm i don't know i mean she's out she's, she's out but, but i know like, but like can you imagine being my niece's patient and yeah. she's screaming at she's you like, to like don't worry about it i'm trying to heal you i swear because she this has is to my, get this mad. Is my process. Can you imagine, like, going to get your tonsils out, and as you're being knocked out, as, like, the gas mask is on, and you're being, like, unconscious? I had my tonsils out, like, a year and a half ago. That's why I went there. Yeah, the yeah, doctor yeah. was just in your face being like, why do you have stupid tonsils, you idiot? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, like, Nynaeve mm -hmm. manages to heal Dailan. Yeah. We learn that the Aiel do not swim. Yeah, because they Too don't... Too much water. They literally do not have enough water where they live. That you can, like, submerge yourself. Yeah, the River of Stones is literally just a, a bunch of stones. Yes. Um, but they were like, uh, we've heard of this swimming. I saw this guy do it once. I was like, what? And so Egwene is like, wait, how did you cross the river? And they're like, we had to, we had, to, we had these things. And, like, they're like, they, she's like, they're so scared of it. And yet they did it anyways. And I was like, nah, it's Aiel, I guess. Yeah. Uh, it's, that's, that's the Aiel. Um, so Dailin is healed. Uh, we're in chapter 39 now, and the Aiel are uh, revealed they're looking for Rand, basically. Basically, the yeah. Girls don't, the girls realize later on in the chapter that it's Rand, but the, yeah. they're basically like, yeah, we need, we're looking for Rand. And the girl's like, okay, well, we're headed to Tyr to fight the, the, the bad people. So. Yeah, pretty much. We'll um, part, and then my least favorite well, thing in the whole book happens. Well, so we also find out that um, Aiel will not attack Aes Sedai under mm -hmm. any circumstances, which yep. I think is going to be extremely Because important. of prophecy. Um, yes, so... Grenoral! Grenoral, thank you so much for the super chat! <laughs> they will not accept a proposal from a man that does not include their sister. Yes, they will all have sex, but not at the same time. Two reason things. I'm just saying you don't know that. You don't know that. You don't I'm, know what they're doing behind closed doors. I'm sure that, you know, they settle down with a gin and tonic and they have a good time. Yeah. Um, um, he who comes with the dawn. <laughs> Um, yeah, so we find out that, yeah, I, there is a prophecy that they failed the Aiel. Yeah. Or, sorry, they failed the Aiel, failed the Aes Sedai at some point. In, before the breaking of the world. Before world. the breaking. Um, nobody actually knows what happened or how or why, yeah. but the Aiel, like, hold fast to this, like, belief, and they ref they say they will not fail them again, and so, they like, they will under no circumstances harm an Aes Sedai, even if the Aes Sedai is trying to kill them. Yeah. Um, um so that is fascinating. Yeah, very cool. Mm -hmm. I'm excited to see how that plays into the story later. Yeah. Uh, or so, if that will if that will include like I wonder if when the Sanchen come back with their with the their like oh if they pastors, want to attack the yeah, yeah like how they're going to have to deal with that. Egwene's gonna have to be like guys, they're not Aes Sedai. They're a different thing. Yeah, it's gonna be very confusing. Um, Hua Hua Ryun, thank you so much, guys, for chat. Uh, Nynaeve getting angry at the thought of someone getting stabbed and stabbing someone in the show is great character consistency. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, You're not wrong. Thanks for the super chat. Uh, so the uh, the girls are attacked. 
uh, by some guys, and they're unconscious. And for the third book in a row, around the three-quarter mark of the novel, mm-hmm. uh, or around, uh, like the two-thirds of the way through the book, Egwene is kidnapped again. Yeah. And... And not for very long, at least. Yeah, but like this is this is the last week when I was like these books, the first three books are structurally too similar for me. Yeah. I wish that there was a little bit more going on in terms of breaking up how the plotting happens of the books. Like it really feels like all three books are built on the same framework. Yeah. And this yep. is another one of those moments where I was like, really, Egwene gets captured again. Yep. And I blissfully it was over quickly, but I was just kind of like. Are we like this is the same plot? Yeah, and I, I, I like I, I understand the purpose of it. Obviously, the Aes Sedai are sorry, the Aiel are going to be very important. We met a couple of them. They come back. We meet more of them. They're all searching for Rand. Um, we meet the like head of the um Aiel like tribe. Yeah, you yeah. know, and they're like bantering and like we we have those relationships which are cool. They're important. But yeah, the, the whole like she's captured again. Franklin, like, um, Egwene gets captured by the White Cloaks and dragged about in chains in book one. Yeah. And then she gets captured by the Sanchen and dragged about by a chain in book two. Yeah. And then she gets <laughs> knocked out and dragged about in book three. And yeah. it happens about the same... It happens about the same place in each book. Like, if it was at least in a different spot in each book, it would feel different. But it just feels like the same beat every time I mean, now. I think the White Cloaks was, like, the halfway mark, but yeah... Sure, but, like, you know what I mean? Like, it is literally, like, we get to a certain point in the book where Egwene is going to be kidnapped or captured by somebody. Yeah. And, like, blissfully, she does get away from being sold this time, and so it's shorter, but... Yeah, 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 for sure. It it is just, it is very... It is the thing I don't like about the first three books. And I like most of... I I really do like these books. I'm loving reading them. We're going to get to some stuff in this section that I love, love, love. There's some really cool stuff here. But the structure being so similar book to book... Just not my favorite. Yeah. yeah I, I wish that... It, I just wish it had a little bit more variety. Yeah. Yeah, um, it, it definitely does feel a little samey. And we have been told that book four does shake things up a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, and we'll get there. But yeah, and it, I think it's And it's also just specifically that it's a Gwen crit- every time. Yeah, and I think it's a valid criticism for these mm-hmm. three books, for sure. Um, So uh, she gets wake... She wakes up. She's on a horse. Uh, They're like, oh no, she's awake. <laughs> Out again. She wakes up a third time. Yeah. And she's listening at the door because a Nynaeve and Elaine are still out. Elaine is bleeding hard. She, her, her skull is broken. Yeah. And she, so Nynaeve is like, or Egwene is like listening at the door. And the door, they're like, yeah, we gave her this root. It's all good. They're going to be out for hours. Uh, oh, Sam Perfect, thank you so much for this super Sam, chat. thank you so much for that. We appreciate it. Honestly, the writing's so good, Sam, that I would still read it if the structure didn't change. I just, I, yeah. I hope it does. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, so she wakes up Nynaeve and Nynaeve is like, those idiots, they gave us a headache medicine when we had a headache. Yeah. I was like, oh, they, oh, they, they, they actually out, helped. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, that's so funny. The guy's like, nah, my grandma definitely taught me this properly. <laughs> I'm like, your Sleep grandma. Yeah, I'm yeah. like, your grandma probably told you exactly what it was, and you didn't fucking listen. Uh, <laughs> like, um, yeah, men tend to not listen to women in this world. Yeah, or in the real one. So um, <laughs> wait, wait, what? Why did you delete Sam Parfait's super chat? It might have been an accident. Monkey. Monkey's we read, hard. but it was after we'd already read it and responded to it. I know. That's what I mean. It was probably meant to be something else. And uh... Right. uh Perry Wolf, thank you for that super chat. Generous mouth just means a wide mouth, a little wide on her face in Jordan Pros. I think Perry Wolf <laughs> I think Perry Wolf is a little bit behind on the live. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But you'll you'll catch up. It's all good. Hi, all good. Perry Wolf. When you get here in like 30 thank minutes. Thank you for that super chat. Thank you for the super chat. <laughs> um uh yeah, so uh the they're listening. Uh, they want to sell the girls. Uh, and it was interesting. The, we, we hear the guy. I actually really like the way that jo- uh, Rob Jordan wrote this, where he's like, the guy's saying, Aes Sedai are worth a lot of money. Not if you can capture them. He's not like, th- capturing them is hard. If you can stomach the people you have to work with to sell them. Yeah. Which I thought was an interesting take on that, like, concept was, yeah, you have to work with the Merdral. And guess what? Those Merdral, they show up. Well, I it's interesting because I thought if initially that meant white cloaks... Um, but then, yeah, the Merdral show up, and I was like, oh, it's bad. okay, it's about to get spicy. It's bad. And so just when you think, like, oh, yeah, no, what what is Nynaeve going to do now to get them out of this situation? Nynaeve heals without her herbs, and it, like, so, she hates it, which is so interesting, right? Because she's yeah. the only one who heals this way, and yeah. it, it is her inner wilder coming out. Well, and the wise ones do the same. Yeah. The ideal wise ones, apparently. Um 
So I, I, I wonder if Nynaeve is going to go with Rand to the Isle Waste and like learn how to not have to be so angry mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> for her powers to work. Uh, and so um, the, uh, the they heal uh, they heal Elaine. They're all pointing the Sidar at the door, and they're about to like blow it out and just go ham on these fools when the other door on the other side blows in. And who is it? It's the Aiel. Yeah. And they are rad. They're so cool. They're so cool. I cannot wait for this in the show. Yeah. The Aiel are so dope. And mm-hmm. they're just killing everybody except the Madral, interestingly. And so they kill everyone around the Madral and they have them circled. And then Nynaeve is like, you know what? It's our it's time. It's time. It's time. They blow out the door. And then Egwene's fire merdral thing from her ter- or her pa- her accepted thing yeah 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 they burn out the uh merdral the way that she remembers doing it in her uh her vision. accepted trial vision thing and i thought that was so cool she cuz we've learned that Egwene can learn weaves by watching or feeling someone do them yeah and so for her to learn how to do a weave from her future self to burn out the merdral is is like a paradoxical cool thing that i was like this is very dope yeah i have no idea how Nynaeve was able to to to, to do it cuz Egwene is like wait i think that's balefire which they even no, like no, mentioned. No, Egwene does. Egwene, I think, is the one who does the thing where like the fire burns out of the Merdral that she does in the future, and uh, Nynaeve shoots Balefire at them. Oh, right, because there's two things that happen here. I thought Nynaeve... fire shoots out of the Merdral, like in uh, Egwene's accepted trial, and Nynaeve shoots Balefire at them, and so there's like these two different kinds of fire happening at the same time. Is how I read it. And so I figured okay, Egwene okay, was okay. doing the thing that she learned from her accepted trial. And at the same time, I, like, they went a little overkill. Yeah, but there was three of them. So it's better safe than sorry. You know what I mean? Yeah, each of them does something different. Yeah. And I, yeah, yeah. I, I, Nynaeve doing the Balefire is cool, but I don't really understand what that is yet. Egwene doing the thing that she learned from her future self is what I really loved about this moment. Yeah. Because that I, I, I love I love crap like i love time travel movies like learning from your future self to do something is just one of the coolest things yeah it makes no sense but i'm into it well but it makes sense in this world right because yeah oh, wait. she could have been in a dream world that was a rea- a parallel reality where a version of herself actually did do all that but that's not her reality she's not going to end up in that same position totally like there's no way that or it, there's no reason to believe that aleda in her reality is evil mm-hmm. it might be a completely different aleda than the one she has in that vision right yeah totally and so this is this is like using multiple realities to learn from other versions of yourself is I it's rad. It's why I love comic books. So much. Yeah, no, I I love that. Uh, Obi Juan, can I be thinking about super you. chat? Thank you. Polyamory can be great or a disaster. Positive examples: Green Ajin Warder, Ayo Culture, Nerdy Clarus. <laughs> 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 Keep my wife's name. No, we're not. We are not. Um, go, I in the chat. No, um, we're not getting ner- into that right now. We're we're not polyamorous. We're just fun. We're just fun. Yeah, we're. Fun. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we we're don't. We, we're not polyam though. Um, it's a circumstantial. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, but we're not. But we're not. Like you know what I mean. Like we. Right. The like the like actual definition of yeah. polyam. Yeah, I support it. In it's between. not our relationship, and that's you do. Great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We have friends who are polyamorous, and they, it works for you. They like... have a different kind of fun than we have, but we also have fun. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, our so... DMs are open. Anyway. Um, <laughs> Wow, you just opened up a whole. I know. Thing. I cannot no. wait to see what happens. No, um, we're just fun new T-shirt idea. Great, I love it. Um, yeah, so unfortunately, I can't. Uh, I can't do the word just fun monkey. That is um, Haley and Kendra, the TikTok, the lesbians on TikTok. That's oh, they. They had. They responded they took, to something uh, on TikTok that way. Um, so it. I am stealing their joke, but um, darn it. Yeah. Um, not modding your DMs. Damn it, Takuna. <laughs> uh, you don't. You don't. You, you don't, don't want, want to. Want, no, you, you don't. Really oh, you, don't. My DMs are fine. You don't want to mod Clarissa's DMs. You really They're a don't. Nightmare. It's a it's a hellhole cesspit. Anyway, um, so only two I yield die. Yeah, because they're... No, no, no. Five I yield die. Or two in the room, right? Yeah, and three outside. Yeah, or, yeah. yeah I think it's five total. Yeah, um, but like they killed, they they straight up showed up, murdered a bunch of men, and like attacked three Murdral, and like there I know there's nineteen of them left, but like the Aiel are so badass. Mm-hmm. God damn it! I I need to learn like stage combat so that I can like yeah get my ass on the Wheel of Time show. Well, apparently they might have cast Avi, 
Avienda? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. There, but apparently she okay. might be cast. I haven't. <laughs> I, I saw a tweet about her being cast, but I don't know who it is. Um, a chat might know. Um, yeah. So yeah. So then uh, they're the the Aiel, uh, escort them to uh, Jareen, and uh, their parting thing is uh, we might see each other again before the change. Yeah, which, which is cool. change. Yeah, I still don't. I don't quite know what that is. I think we're gonna. I think we're gonna learn about the change when Rand learns about the change. When he goes to the Isle Waste. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. We're going to need, a, like, the inside perspective in the Isle Waste, I think, to really understand what's going on. But, yeah, the Isle, like, have zero fear. They're like, yeah, eh, death comes to us all. You want to dance? Um, Yeah, dance with me, Eilis. Oh, it's good. Yeah, so good. Chapter 40. Y'all, mm-hmm. we, need to, we need to get a move on. We have an hour left. Chapter 40, Matt and Tom disembark in Andor. Matt is less hungry, finally, but finally. he's been throwing food overboard to like tease the captain, which uh, Matt, don't be Matt, a dick. don't. That's no. don't waste food. Yeah, it's in the middle of a civil war, like this I is know. one of those moments where I'm like, dude, I get what you're doing, but like you're being an ass. Yeah, that's 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 a different There's, kind of disrespectful. No, yeah, that I didn't like that. <laughs> I yeah, love yeah. that. I'm like, you know, you can like kill people, Matt. Like, but don't but waste don't food. Waste food. <laughs> God, we sound like our parents. <laughs> no, that's just, no. <laughs> don't waste food. Oh no, my parents w- don't care about food as much as I do. I, I'm a food man. You know I'm a food man. That's fair. I'm that's hungry fair. now. I'm Yeah, I am permanently um, hungry. That is my state of being. You are not permanently hungry. I am. You are occasionally hungry. No, I oh, I love food a lot. You love food. You just can't eat a lot of it. Oh, that's true. I fill up quickly. Right. But like I, that's why I just snack constantly. I feel like people come to this show to listen to us talk about We Love Time. And, and we just. They just leave with anecdotes about our personal I'm lives. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Anyways, back on track. <laughs> Back on track. Matt's being kind of a douche. Yeah. But then he gives money to a woman and her children. So it's like, okay, well, I guess hopefully maybe you can learn from... Yeah, because Tom is like, you're a, you're a good dude. And he's like, no, I'm not. And then he sees a hungry kid and he's like, take some money. I'm a yeah. bad, bad man. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> Matt is not okay. Um. So uh, everywhere's packed. But they get to an inn and Matt is like, well, I'll, I'll play you some dice. Let's roll some dice for to let me sleep in your barn. Yeah. And I'll take two of your horses if I win. Yeah. And the the, the innkeeper's like, all right, rolls four fives and or four sixes and a five. Yeah. And Matt rolls five sixes. Which means that they're playing Yahtzee? I think. Is like I don't really know what dice is. Like they play dice. So they roll five dice and high mm-hmm. roll wins. I'm assuming so. Which is Yahtzee. I yeah. thought they were playing... There, there's a lot of dice games that you can play, right? Like craps, like there's stuff. But they're, I think the dice game in this is is just Yahtzee. <laughs> which is hilarious to me. Yeah. Because yeah. every time they talk about dice, the more they talk about dice, the more I'm like, oh, the, this is... They, they literally describe it as Yahtzee. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't know. It, 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 it's a fun game, but it's just funny that... It's just that, funny like, that it's Yahtzee. It's I, Yahtzee? Yeah. Like, I just want Matt to one day, like, yell, like, I don't know, Manethrin or something. Like <laughs> It's just very funny. I, I, I didn't expect it to be... I They talk about the dice so many times, and then when they explain the rules here, I was like, oh, they're, they're, I, I mean, played a lot of Yahtzee as a kid, and, like... I'm sure there's, crazy. like, different ones, but, yeah, in this instance, it's, like, you Be-trake, rolled four of a kind, and I rolled five of a kind. Be Drake, dice poker... Is called yeah. That's what Yahtzee is. That that's the game of Yahtzee. Is is dice poker. But you have to yell Yahtzee, right? Well, yeah, but they've forgotten about the yelling. They've kept the dice. It's anyway, smart. it's not important. It just it, they, they described the game that they were playing, and I it just cracked me up. I yeah. was like, this is the the least complicated yeah. dice game possible. Oh yeah, yeah. We also find out that the queen is closing the border and is not taking any more refugees, which because, Tom says is sus, right? Because is that actually in this chapter? Or is that in the next chapter? I wrote a note about it. Uh, because Lord Gabriel. Is her new, is her new advisor. advisor. Yeah. And that dude might also be a Forsaken. Forsaken or definitely like a dark friend. Oh, this dude's evil. This dude is We're, evil. Matt, Matt is going to have to save more gays from him by the end of this book. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think, yeah, Matt think, is going to get caught up in stuff in came And I think Tom is also going to help save more gays. Mm-hmm. And that's going to and like... And then they're going to bone! I don't actually know. No. Tom and more gays are going nah, to... He just they're lost. going to have one last... No, no, they're not going to get back together. Oh, they're just going to have one last... They're going to have one last moment. They're going to have their, like, one last night, and then she's going to die. Wow. All right. Uh, It's a book. This is what happens. Yeah. They're going to have... Storytelling. They're they're going to, like, almost rekindle things, and Mm -hmm. then she's going to die. 
and Elaine is going to be pulled because you have to in order oh God, for no, a, I don't want, I don't Elaine want, to be interesting you have to pull her between the tower and the and the throne I don't want Marquise to die yet because she's really cool and I don't think I'm not saying yet I think it happens in the next book I don't okay. think it happens in this book I think that like Morghese, Tom, and Matt will be like on the run or something in the next book, and then uh, I think by the end of book four, when Elaine gets uh promoted to Tar, to Elaine's uh, by the end of book four, they're all all three girls are going to be promoted to Felicia Sedai. Yeah. And then I... the day that Elaine is promoted to Felicia Sedai, Morghese, <laughs> she's going to find out that Morghese is dead. Ah, yeah. It's going to be. Probably. She's going to like put it's on her shawl. She, and, like, someone's going to, like, burst in the room as she puts on her shawl and be like, your mom died. Oh, congrats, by the way. Good job. I hate it, but you're probably right. Uh, it's it's storytelling, but, yeah, that, God, that. I just, I don't, I, I, I don't know what keeping her alive does unless yeah. it has to do with Rand learning about Tigrain being his mom or something yeah. like that. But, like, I think that in order to for Elaine to become, in order to satisfy the Elaine story and Elena wanting her to be the queen, all of those things. All of that, uh, yeah. Uh, I, I think that Marguerite has to die, and you're not going to do that until her and Tom have some sort of either blow up at each other or some, yeah. like, her, almost almost reconciliation that doesn't get to go all the way because she's dead. Yeah, her and Tom definitely have some, like, unresolved things happening there that, like, would just, like, it would just feel unsatisfying to, yeah. like, mm-hmm. leave it. And so I definitely think that there's going to be something there. And I'm not saying that's um, what I want. I like Morghese as a character a lot. Yeah, I think she's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just think that, like, a, it's, in order for Elaine to be a main character you're going to have to do this at some point. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. Um, so, yeah, so Matt wins dice, obviously, because he's really good at just winning dice. Yeah. Um, he's not as good at winning at cards, but he's still pretty good at it. Mm-hmm. Um, he rolls, so they're able to sleep in the barn, and they get two horses. He walks in, and he's like, ah, yes, these are my horses now. And I was like, you're such a fucking... You're they are. He's shit. not wrong. I know, but he's such a little shit. Like, oh, I, yeah. Oh, a man. thousand percent, yes. Um, yeah, so they uh, they kind of, like, unpack. They, like, pop up in the rafters, I think is what it is. Tom's was. having a bit of a smoke. Yeah, yeah, he's literally smoking. And a woman walks in. No, um, a woman sneaks her carriage into the barn. Yeah. She doesn't, like, walk in. She, like, opens the door and, like, sneaks a giant carriage into the barn. She's, like, looking around. <laughs> I'm like, you, okay, all right. And so, sure. all right. uh... She's immediately attacked because she's been followed by some dudes. Yeah. And they're screaming about the guild. Yeah. And Tom's like, oh, she's an illuminator. Yeah. We she's, get to, uh... I wrote, she's the illuminator Rand got fired. Yeah, literally. Literally. Because we know that... T- t- <laughs> we, I remember, like, the name... T- what is it? Tam- Tamic? Tamiz? I, Tamiz, yeah. Yeah. Tamiz. I, I literally remember that from the book. And, like, a woman, like, yelling at him for, like, knocking stuff over or whatever. And it looks like they kind of, um... I just, well, can we put a pin in that for one second? Yeah. Eric says, smoking in a barn filled with hay. Now, that is dumb. Look, look. As a man who spent most of his high school years getting high in a barn, it's not hard not to light the hay on fire. I smoked a lot of Mary Jane in a, in a cow farm. <laughs> and In a cow farm. Look, it's not the farm. smartest thing you could have done. No, it's not. It's not. It, it, it is very easy not to light the hay on fire. All right, if you say so. Especially if you're smoking from a pipe. It is really hard to get the fire out of the pipe. Right. When you're casually slip, like, it's not like you're, like, waving it around, like, like you're sitting there, you're fine. All right. Yeah, All right. if you're smoking a joint, it's a little bit harder. You have to be a little bit more careful. But from a pipe, you're, you're generally fine. I'll have to take your word for it. Back to what you were saying. Uh, uh, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, it's the Illuminators that Rand um, ruined their lives uh, back in the previous book. Um, and so, yeah, she is immediately yeah. attacked by four of them. <coughs> Excuse you. I think there's like four of them. Um, and uh, Matt throws himself into the middle oh, of this fray. Oh, he Tarzans. He, he literally... He jumps onto a rope and he Tarzans down into the situation. And then Tom goes, Matt. You're and he looks st- up. Like... And he gets his... Uh, Tom is R2-D2. <laughs> and uh, Matt is Luke Skywalker. And he throws in the lightsaber. And he throws in the lightsaber. Yeah, yeah, yeah 100%. <laughs> and then Matt is like... Do, 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 yeah. do, 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 and done. Because my fights don't last more than five moves. I mean, honestly, they, they shouldn't. If your fight lasts more than a few moves, it's you're in trouble. Um, but yeah, he just knocks them all to the ground. He, he jumps down without a weapon and is like, oh, darn it. Good thing Tom is, like, smart. I... <laughs> Matt needs to, uh, Matt needs to stop. Matt needs to be a little more like Perrin, actually, uh, and just, uh, think about things before he, before he does them, or speaks. 
Because, anyways, uh, yes, we we meet a uh, a uh, Aludra. Oh uh, yeah. Aludra. I'm ass- I'm assuming it's how you pronounce that. Alud. Uh. <laughs> Duh. No, there's an R in there. Dra, I, right? I, oh, I, I was like. Just, I was like commenting about Ludes on the internet. Like she's hot. Even though she's older. Oh, I think Matt's I in. I think Matt's into milfs. Connect those dots. I think he's just into every. He. He's into anything. He's, Matt just will. Matt will sleep with anybody. Yeah, literally. Yeah. He he is he. <clears throat> everybody to him is like attractive, and it's worth a dance. Yeah, worth a dance. So that's it. She gives them fireworks for saving yeah. uh, her, and she's, Matt's like, "Here's some money," and Tom's just snickering. He's like, "Dude, you you have to stop pretending that you're that you're are you're all hard." You are, you are not hardened by the streets, my dude. Yeah, yeah, my my dude. Um, and I wrote, "Dream accomplished." Dream accomplished. Yeah, because um, Egwene dreams about oh, Ryan, uh, about Matt an and the Illuminator, and I was like, "All right, well, that happened." Yeah, I'm assuming so, she's gonna come back. Uh, probably. Yeah. Yeah, I. It would be like a strange interaction for it never to come back up again, mm-hmm. uh, especially because they have names and they're from previous books. And the fact that she, yeah, she's related to like the incident with Rand. Like yes. it feels like she's tied. Ta- Aludra is now tied into the wheel. Yeah, she is definitely coming back again. And yeah, they get some fireworks. She's like, these ones, a little bang. These ones, a little smoke. These ones, some do sparkles. not open them. Because do not open them. If you expose them to oxygen, they will explode. Which Matt then. Does later. Yeah, because he's 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 a curious little kitty. But he's just lucky, so he can get away with it, I guess. Um, chapter thirty or forty one, uh, basically is Fail joins them. Yeah, that's really all that happens. In uh, chapter. Fail Fail tells Moraine all the things that Perrin doesn't tell Moraine, uh, and so Moraine's pissed at Perrin because. He didn't tell them immediately. And then Perrin shouts that Moraine is an Aes Sedai. Aes Sedai. And now everyone on the ship is all scared of her, which, yeah. This uh, starts This starts. A, this starts a thing that happened. There's a joke that is repeated like four times over the next three chapters. Uh-huh. That is Z- Zareen slowly learning things because people just say them in front of her. And every yeah. time she goes, wait, what? what? Yeah, literally that <clears throat> joke happens like four times. And it's great. It's a good joke. Um, um, I do like uh, that Maureen's like, all right, she's your responsibility. And Perrin's like, I don't want I don't her. Want she's her? like, I'm no one's responsibility. Maureen, I am a strong, independent woman. Why are you telling some man? And I was like, you tell her, Zareen. Yeah. You tell her. Tell her. You are nobody's responsibility. Oh, my God. Like, um, come on. So they ride into Ilian, and Maureen's like, well, Perrin, you're Taviran, so these things are going to happen. And Zareen's like, wait, you're Taviran? Yeah. Cool. Wait, wait, what? Good job, Maureen. Maureen um, just doesn't care at this point. She's like, you have vowed that you'll do whatever I say, and you're here now. That's important. So she does matter. vow on her hunt for the horn. Yeah, the, yeah, on her vows for the hunt. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, we know that she values those very, very highly, and so... So they, they yeah. arrive in Ilian, <clears throat> and, and we learn a lot about Ilian. They, they, like, tour the city a little bit. We get, like, the hitchhiker's guide to Ilian. Uh, there's the perfume district that smells like crap. Yep. And uh, and it feels wrong. They cross town with uh, Zareen just like, just like on Perrin's horse, just like holding on to his hips, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm, it's mm-hmm. intimate. Uh, and yeah, Loyal, everyone is just kind of like, this This ain't good. Loyal's a little bit freaked out because the stone workers from his steading work Have in this city. In Alien, and he's yeah. like, I, I really do not want to get sent home because they're going to make me get married. Yeah. He's like, I guess it wouldn't be a bad life, but, like, this is more fun. Uh, So they get to an inn, and uh, they meet Moraine's woman? Like, Moraine's employee? Yeah, she's like, you've been working for me for 12 years or whatever later. So Maida's like, I will do, I'm Moraine, but not Moraine, whatever, Mary. I I will do anything for you. Well, yeah, yeah. Moraine very clearly has, like, her, like, web of spies, her, like, network that she has built up in her years uh, away from Tarvalon. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, so we're getting to see, like, one of those um, where she she will, she basically, like, what sh- she says is law and any information she has, she gives to Maureen. And we get the quick breakdown on everything you ever needed to know about Ilian in five minutes or less. Yeah, yeah, it's great. <laughs> um, so Ilian has a new, so basically the structure of Ilian is that there is the king and then there is the Nine Lords. Yeah. And the king has a palace. And then the Nine Lords weren't allowed to build something as big. So they built something that is the exact, exact same, same as his, but two but feet two smaller. Feet yeah. Which is the pettiest Hilarious. bullshit I've ever heard in my life. And I hate rich people. Yeah. Yeah. So, but one of those Nine Lords 
he's a new boy. He's a new boy. Yeah, he's new. And she's like, well, that's kind of weird because I never heard of him before. But yeah. for some reason, he's in the circle now. So there's Stop that. Doppelganger, thank you for that super chat. Thank you for the super um, chat. This is a second time there has been a POV chapter at the inn easing the badger. Do you remember when that was? Oh, was that where Bail Dolman was? In, like... We've never been to Ilian before, though. Wasn't he in Ilian? Oh, no, wait. Easing the badger is the... um. It was in Remen, right? Mm-hmm. Or no, it was in... I don't Gilad- remember. Easing- Wait, that's not this chapter. No, I, I literally do not remember the names of the inns. So, um, yeah. Also, we were doing this. Um, we we were doing this section. We were reading part of this section at, while in the car driving yesterday, and I was reading out loud. Yeah. And of course, we got to the chapters in Ilian, and I uh, my brain like broke, uh, like trying to read out loud how the Ilianers speak, and I was like, I can't. I'm right? Okay, it was ship, ship captain, apparently. Oh, okay. I was a guess. Bale Dolman was an alien. Interesting. That's what I thought he was an alien, but like we didn't get to see what any of Ilian. What happened here? The scene where he got the letter and the person holding this letter. Right, 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 right. Yeah, yep. mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Yeah, for yeah. some reason, yeah. Yep, you're right. You're right. Yeah, I, I, I didn't, that was a guess. But Interesting. It was the best guess I had, so. Interessante. Uh, <laughs> um, so, uh... We learned that Zareen hates fish, like really hates fish. Yeah. And I think that this is why I feel such a kinship to the character. Because I too do not like eating fish. I was like, oh, hi, Zareen and I would get along great. You're like, I understand. You yeah. are a parent. I, well, yeah, um, kind of. Uh, so then uh, they're, they're settling into the inn and there's a lady just like stripping, I guess. I don't know. She's singing like the sexiest song Perrin's ever heard. And Perrin is so uncomfy because he's like erect. Yeah, yeah. Um, She's, like, singing very, like, explicit. It's basically, like, reading, like, a smut novel. Yes, but, but singing it, it and dancing. Yeah. Um... Which I thought was hilarious. Yeah, and so Zareen, then this is why she's, I love her so much, is she's like watching parents. She's like, you horny dog. And she yeah, keeps yeah. like poking him in the ribs. She's like, this is turning you on. And he's like, she's stop. singing WAP. <laughs> Get a bucket and a mop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, um, it I, was I, great. Uh, so when I was a waiter in New York, uh-huh. uh, I served Meg the Stallion. Before she was really famous, mm-hmm. uh, she came in and she had like her entourage with her, and they sat in my section. Mm-hmm. And we they had like this like private room upstairs, and they were th- she's the nicest person. Yeah. I just want to say like I Meg the Sun's one of those people where like I'm so glad she's having the success that she's having because she was so kind to everyone who served her. Like yeah. all of the waiters and all the busboys, there were like twenty of them, so it was like a big production to get them food Aww. and drinks and stuff. She she was the best. They tipped really well. Nice. And I yeah, and then like the next year, like WAP like blew up. And I was like, I'm glad it's like a good yeah, person. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm so I'm so judgmental of people who are mean to waiters. And so the oh, fact yeah. that Meg the Salad was just like this like really kind, really fun person, I was like, I'm so glad you're I, successful because you seem great. I appreciate you. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um Yeah, she's awesome. Uh it kind of reminded me of like um this like this scene kind of reminded me because he talks about the really low cut like blouse and her like moving around. It kind of reminded me of like Esmeralda from uh, the Hunchback, like that like oh yeah yeah that yeah. like very like free like kind of like I don't know like vibe mm-hmm. um and that like musical like I don't know we, we, there are people who who like move to music and are just like musical in being and like that's just that's just what I pictured for this scene. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and so, uh, they sit down, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, that's a good, it's a, it's a good pull. I like, I like Esmeralda a lot. That was a <laughs> sexual awakening for me as a child. Um, I'm shocked. That was one of the few animated characters I, that I was really into that was, uh, not an animal of some kind. Um. They had no business making Robin Hood. Oh my God. Robin Hood? Rude. Uh. <laughs> the Lion King? When Nala jumps on Simba... In, when they're like adult lions, those I, eyes. I'm not okay. Those with are it. come fuck me eyes. I'm still not okay with it. Uh, um, <laughs> I, I, uh, the one thing I will say that I think as a kids movie, the CGI Lion King movie does better than the original is that it is way less sexual. Um, Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, they uh, they sit down to eat. Mm-hmm. Zareen won't eat the fish, but Maureen's like, eat the fish, and she's like, fine. <laughs> yes, mom. Yeah. Uh, and then Perrin is like smelling and cause you know, he's a wolf man now yeah. and he's like sniffing the air and he's like, there's something wrong. Yeah. And then he looks over and he's like, 
Uh, those guys are evil. Yeah, they're those guys are straight up just walking towards us and no one else can see them. That's kind of weird. <laughs> and so Perrin gets up. And then they have knives. <laughs> and he, he grabs the chair and he, he rips, rips it the with legs his bare hands. Off of the chair. Because he's like, well, I don't have my axe. Oh, I love it so much. And then he oh just God. kills like five gray men. And uh, what's her face? Uh, Zareen gets one of them. She gets her little dagger in one Zareen of them. Zareen gets one of them. Um, I know that there was a fireball, so I'm assuming Maureen also got one of them before they were too intertwined for her to do anything I think else. she burned one, but that one was still fine because I think that Perrin hits that guy after he gets hit with the fireball. Uh, all I know is one of them is singed. I don't know if it died oh, to the fire. He or... also does throw the cheese platter first, which is a... <laughs> you don't. Guys, Save cheese. the cheese. There's not Like, you cannot waste cheese. Yeah, because that cheese is in the sawdust now. You're not going to eat it. No, no. Um... Oh, for initiative, yeah. So yeah, he rips, he rips the, I just, and I was like, God damn, like if I was Zareen, I would be turned on too. That man just ripped that chair. She's like, you're very strong. I was like, if you can split that chair like that, how do you split these cheeks, boy? Oh my God. Um, <laughs> oh my God. When are we getting demonetized? We, um, uh, pro I think already, I think this was already demonetized. Um. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. I hate it. Um. Um. <laughs> So, uh, yeah. so they kill a bunch of gray men, six yeah. of them. And then uh, uh, people are like, oh, something happened. And people saw the fireball. So they immediately know that Maureen is Aes Sedai. They can put those pieces together. Yeah. They're smart people. And the woman who was dancing is like, I'm so sorry about my songs. If I offended you, she's like, mm, I'm so sorry. Yeah, which is weird because, like, I, you would think that the green Aes Sedai being, like, as horny as they are, it the seems like a well-known thing. Yeah. The, so it seems weird that she's like, oh, I didn't mean to be sexy in front of an Aes Sedai. And I'm like, you don't know. The, these Aes Sedai. You don't, don't worry about them. They fuck. They it's live fine. They live too long to not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, know yeah. what I mean? Like, eventually you're going to you're gonna try shit. Oh, yeah. It, it, this is the story of every vampire thing, right? Where it's like it's, the 300-year-old vampire is like, I did everything. But it's the sense of decorum, right? Like, if you know, like, yeah. it's, it's the same way, like, you don't sing, like, lewd songs in, like, the Queen's Court. Unless it's, like, a small gathering and she, like, asks you to, right? Like, there's, nah, I'd do it. Well, I, you would, yes. You you would. But it, it, she's like, I don't know, maybe this Aes Sedai, like, maybe I've offended her. Yeah, like, yeah. She, and she's just trying to cover her ass. So she doesn't get a fireball. Uh, and so, yeah. So then Moraine, like, they win the fight. There's a bunch of gray men dead on the floor. And Moraine pulls Lan aside and is like, I'm leaving you now. I will be back later. Do not follow me. I'm cutting you off from the bond. I, this is something I have to do by myself. Yeah. And Lan's like, no. No. No, please. I want to come. Yeah. <laughs> don't, uh, don't leave me behind with Perrin. He's so boring. <laughs> God, yeah, Lan is such boy for a moment because Maureen is uh she's she heads out. Yeah, she peace out, and that's the end of the chapter. My favorite thing is that like the bodyguard in the like inn just like picks up one man by each of his belts and hauls them like by twos out of the inn. Yeah, I think the gray men are like lithe, so they're probably like thin dudes. They're probably lighter. They're yeah, they're very they gotta be sneaky, right? Yeah, because they got they got to be sneaky. They're like the most normal, plain, average person you can imagine. Mm -hmm. It's just funny, the image of him, like, hauling them, like, buckets of water, like. Mm -hmm. So, then we get to, um, Lan being like, all right, we're gonna, I, Lan is a man of action, and he just got left behind. Yeah. So, I what mean, does a man of action do? He's like, we're gonna go look around for clues. <laughs> we're gonna go play Scooby-Doo. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Uh, and so he takes them outside, There's and he's even like, a dog. Perrin, you smell really good. Lan, you see really good. Zareen, I guess we can't leave you behind. Let's go look for clues. Oh, no. He says, loyal. You can see really good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, Perrin yeah. can smell really good. And Zareen is there. Yeah. He's yeah, like, yeah. And uh, yeah, you can come too. She is clues, moral clues, support. Guys, I freaking we love. We just got a letter. We, we just got, got a letter. We just got a letter. I wonder who it's from. Elaine. Uh, <laughs> so they're checking the perimeter and they find these, they find these like um, shadowy prints in the stone. In the, yeah, in And the you stone. immediately were like, I wonder if they only, if, if if it's like devil dogs who only leave prints on stone but don't leave it on anything else. And she was reading this out loud to me because I was yeah, driving. Yeah, we were in the car and I was reading the book out loud. And she um, stopped to be like, I wonder if these dogs only leave prints on stone and they don't leave them on like dirt or like grass. And then she was like, I'm going to keep reading. 
So Lance says that these dogs only leave prints on stone, and, and I was like, what the I, uh, <laughs> Did you read ahead? Well, no, because I, I remember when Perrin had the smell at the beginning of the section, mm-hmm. and he, like, there were, like, chunks of stone that had, like, parts of, like, a paw print in it, and he's like, well, that's super weird. Yeah. Um, and I was like, okay, well, they're marks in stone again. So it makes sense that there are, like, these dogs that, like, don't leave, are, are very difficult to track. Yeah. But not impossible to track, right? It, they, they have to have some kind of, like, caveat, I guess. Um, so, yeah. So, they don't leave prints in dirt or mud or anything like that. But stone, that'll fuck you up. Yeah. And so, uh, there. Are, the, the, this is where things get weird. So, I, up until a few years ago, mm-hmm. I, I love Witcher 3. I think it's a great video game. Mm-hmm. I did not know the Wild Hunt was a real world thing. I thought yeah. it was a Witcher thing. Yeah. And so it's only in like the last year that I've really like learned that the Wild Hunt is real Polish folklore. Yeah. And so when the Wild Hunt appeared in Same. this book, there's still a part of my brain that for the most of my life, for the last like 10 years, thought that the Wild Hunt was a Witcher thing. What? Sorry. That's also Maureen's tale. <laughs> she only leaves her footprints on stone. Uh, Sorry. Um, yeah. I yeah, also that's funny. thought that it was a Witcher thing. I thought it was a Witcher thing. And yeah. it's not. And so yeah. the wild hunt is, they're like, oh yeah, the wild hunt. And I was like, Geralt? Siri? Yeah. yeah. Triss? It's like, I would die. Is Yennefer here? <laughs> I mean, tr- tr- there's definitely a lot of redheads, so any of them could be Triss, but um, Triss is actually a wise one. Triss is actually a wise one. Uh, yeah, I, I, yeah. Yeah, it was I, just weird. I didn't, I, I didn't did not realize, realize yeah. not a Witcher thing. So. Uh, and so the Wild Hunt gets brought up a lot here, which is interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, it's generally a Northern European thing. Yeah, that's, it's really cool. I just, I, I. I never knew that. We didn't know, so that's yeah. cool. Um, it gives me a new little bit of um, uh, folklore to kind of dive into because I do I like folklore quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, so Lan is like, I have a reason to go talk to Moraine now. She can't be mad at me for following because I found the dark hound. Yeah, he's like, I have new information to bring her that she must have this, like immediately. Which honestly, reasoning is fair, but it is very much an excuse just to go follow Moraine. Yeah, yeah. He's Lan is a good boy. He's a good boy. Uh, and so he's like, go to get as much sleep as you can because we're gonna leave soon and you need to be ready. Mm-hmm. And so we get another dream sequence because what would this book be if it wasn't just learning things through dreams? Um, there's a lot of dream sequences in this book. There's a lot of them. Yeah, and I yeah. think it's going to be that way for the entire series. Yeah. Um, so Matt is dicing with Baalzaman. What? That's the first thing. But Matt, for Matt, Perrin's dreams. The first dream is oh. Matt is dicing with Baal. He's playing dice with Baalzaman. Yes. It, he's yes. playing Yahtzee. He's playing Yahtzee. <laughs> with the devil. Yeah, I love that. It, it, this uh, The first thing I thought of here was Cuphead. Because at the beginning of Cuphead, Cuphead is doing is gambling, gambling with, with the, the devil, devil and he loses his soul. Yeah. Do you think that Matt becomes an agent of no. the devil at some point because he loses a bet with Balzaman? No. Like, do you think? I I don't know. I think there might be a section of this book where Matt is because once working you're a for, gray man, I don't think there's any way to reverse that. That would seem weird. A gray man? Yeah, gray men are people who lose their Brett, souls. Thank you so much for that super chat. Brett, thank you for the super Hoping chat. Hoping you guys will love the Dragon Reborn finale. Can't wait for the Shadow Rising reviews. I think I think we'll love it. Yeah, people keep being like, oh, so if you guys need a break after book four, I was like, what about our show makes you think we're taking breaks? <laughs> breaks? No, we don't know how to pace. We ourselves. are reading the Wheel of Time, people. Um, we will get to other books in the Nerdy Ready Book Club after, but we have we have books to read. Um I think, no, I think that he, like, loses a bet and has to, like... But the gray men don't have souls. So if he loses his I didn't soul, say, doesn't that mean No, no, I'm not saying man? literally he's going to lose his soul. I'm oh, saying, like, I think that, that he, he might work his... for... He might sell his soul to the devil oh, for, okay, okay. for a brief like... period of the books because mm-hmm. he loses a bet. Because he's going to have this string of luck where he thinks he can't lose and can't lose and can't lose and can't lose. Mm-hmm. And at some point, he'll, like, when it's Baalzaman, he'll lose. And he'll have to, like, be on the dark side for, like, a book or two. Uh, I don't know. That would be tough, and I feel like Matt was already kind of a dick with the dagger, and so I feel like going back to that, I, 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 I don't know. I, I can't see that happening. I'm going to say I don't, I can't see it. I don't know. But... I just think that, like, it's a four, we have 13 books left, or uh, we have 11 books left. Mm-hmm. Matt being evil for, like, two of them, just for, so it's different, because it, uh, some of our main characters have to go to the other side. There's no way all of the good guys stay good guys the entire time. 
like Rand is going to be crazy for a couple of books. He's going to go off the deep end, right? I think that Matt will, Matt's going to gamble himself into a position that where he ends up and he's going to have to like have a redemption arc, right? Like uh, some of these characters have to fall so that they can have a redemption arc. Some of these characters, there's just, there's, there's too many pages and too many words left in this series for us not to get something. Um, I guess. I just think that, like, because Rand has to deal with the madness, I think that he's going to be the one with the, like, fall and redemption. It would seem weird to also have Matt have the same thing. But, but their, theirs would be very different, right? Matt's would be because he's cocky and, like, over sure. Yeah, maybe. I just, I don't know. You know what I mean? I don't know. I just, the dicing with Baalzaman feels like it has to mean something more than just dice. Like, it's not like they're playing a casual, friendly game. There has to be real consequences. Oh, yeah, there's definitely he's gambling stakes with the devil. in that game. I just don't know if it's like his subservience. Yeah. So. Um, next dream is the girls spring a trap. Uh, that, that one seems obvious. That's their they're, intended that's purpose. That's what they're going to go do that's right now. What they've said they're doing. Yeah. Um, and then uh, we learned that the wolves call, uh, the wolves have named for the Forsaken, which I thought was interesting. Yeah. Uh, and so Baalzaman is Heartfang, which cool. Uh, and I, I really, I really like that Lanfear is Moonhunter. Yeah. The, the Heartfang and Moonhunter sounds like a DC comic book. That's fun. Yeah. That's very cool. But they see Land Fear and Hopper's like, no, 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 you're you're, you're not ready. You're not old bull yet. You're, you're young too, bull. Get out. New. Flee. That's what he says. Flee. Too new. And then he's like, you have to be ready for the last hunt, which is that the last hunt is, I think, Perrin leading, leading the pack, all of the uh, the ghost dead dream wolves into a dream war. Yeah. I yeah. think that I think the last hunt is not a real hunt. I think it is a dream hunt. Yeah. I, I agree <clears> with that <throat> for sure. Yeah. Um. So he wakes up. Let's let let's let's role play the next moment, okay? I'm gonna wake up and you're gonna do what the other person in this scene is doing. Alright? I don't remember. Isn't she just like sitting? So here, I'm just gonna be like ah! <laughs> Why are you in my bedroom? <laughs> Zareen, what the what the actual F You we, shake in your sleep. We said that you could come with us. Yeah, you mutter and you shake in your sleep. <laughs> Why are you in my hot. bedroom? It's kinda hot. Actually. Sorry to everyone wearing headphones. <laughs> uh, Dragon Wolves, thank you for that super chat. Thank you for the super uh, get chat. Get used to the dream sequences. They're going to be in all the books and some will be fun. And some will be completely annoying, but they're enjoyable to read through. Good to know. Um, yeah. We should, after this, I'd be curious to like put together like a compilation of just the dream sequences. There should be like a 16th book, but it's just the dream sequences. Um, yeah, Zarina, so Zarina's just watching them, which is it's just weird. Yeah. It's all weird. That's weird. Zarina's horny in this scene, not going to lie. Yes, mess messenger. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah. She's like... Marina's Marine you Marine watched him rip seat. that that chair part, and she was like, "I the, I need those hands on my body." Yeah, mm -hmm. and because I would too, I'd be like, "God damn!" Oh, there's yeah. that guy. It's it's you know, there's that guy on TikTok who just splits wood with an axe, and women are just duetting him, going, uh, <laughs> "That that is what Perrin is in the scene." I look, he's he's that man is doing very well on TikTok, just splitting wood with an axe and a tight shirt. Because Get it. Get that bag. You know, some yeah. people just want to be split like those logs. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, so, uh, yeah, so m m parents are all upset. Zareen's a little horny. And Maureen bursts into the scene. Says, well, you know what? Those dreams of yours, they actually, there's some merit there. Uh, basically, the alien is controlled by a dark... Uh, a, a forsaken, forsaken is ruling alien. Yeah. Um, and then the chapter ends. And I Next was like, chapter. what? Yeah, I was like, what the heck? But it's fine, because we stay with them. Yeah, so the next chapter, immediately, she's like, it's Samil. And they're like, Samil, not Samil. And I was like, wait, who's Samil? Sam or Samil? Sam 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 Samuel? I, I, it's got an A in it. But... Samuel? I don't know. Samuel? I have... I don't know. Samil just sounds like a meal. Like... Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I'm assuming Samuel? it's Sam 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 Samuel? Samuel? I don't know. Anyway, yeah. he is... um. He's, he's, yeah, he's, he's, he's the Brent. big bad now. Yeah, yeah. Samuel? There's no way it's Samuel. Samuel? Samuel? Samuel, okay. Samuel. Interesting. Um, so, yeah, so he's in charge. And so at this point, I turned, she, uh, Ariel was reading, and I was like, oh, um, so they must not go to Rand. I thought that the rest of the book was going to be my rain dealing with this in Ilian. You did think that, yeah. And then no, no, they they're no, like they no, we, we have to run away. This is yeah. this is too big for us right now. Yeah. We we need to go. Yeah. We 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 need to go. Yeah, and was like, no, no, they're gonna stay here and they're gonna figure this. Oh, out. I thought I this like, might be the rest of the book. Get the book out. Yeah. Right. I thought they're like, oh, they'll like deal with the the like they can't leave Ilian to be run by Forsaken. So 
the girls are going to have to go save Rand because Moraine isn't going to get there in time because she's dealing with this. Yeah. No, they get on they get on horses and they, they ride. Yeah. Um, Slick Jack, we don't use the glossary because there are spoilers in there. So yeah. you're just we don't need the glossary to, for books that we're not gonna in. are just going to have to deal with us getting it wrong the first time. Yeah. <laughs> um, Samuel. I don't... Samuel. Sam I L O S I'm <laughs> I'm reading the I S E L as an E. Yes, Samuel. Thank okay. you, Sam, for the super chat. So then Perrin, uh, they're they're like trying to get out of Dodge, and yeah. Perrin, and so Lan is like the, the, they're not after Maureen, they're after you, and they're all in the barn. And Perrin is like, why would they be after me? Rand is the Dragon Reborn, and Zareen is, is like, like Rand is the Dragon Reborn. What? I know. I was like, oh my god. <laughs> Outward groan. Parents like, like, God, I'm so. Oh, and Maureen's man. like, Parent, shut up of your face. Yeah. Shut up of your face. Yeah. Um. Yeah. And then more. Was is it Maureen that says that Matt blew so blew the horn? Well, we haven't gotten there yet. But yeah. oh, anyways, yeah. There's just, there's so many. Because first they get attacked by the dark hounds. Oh, Maureen is like, you are bound to us now. You cannot leave. Yeah. This is the moment of no return. And, and she's like, like, and, and Nadia. You get leave. And Nadia's like, no, it'll be fine. I'll just stay here. And she's like, no, 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 no. You, you Run. leave. Run now. Get out and take whoever you love and get out of this city yeah. and never come back. Ilian is dead to us. All right. Fetch did not happen. Fetch will never happen. Stop trying to make Fetch happen. Uh, so they get chased by the Dark Hounds and yeah. they're like, we can outrun them. And Lan's like, no, we can't. We're stopping and fighting. We will die if we try and outrun them. Well, yeah, it was interesting that Perrin was like, oh, they're, they're super far away. And they're like, no, 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 you don't understand. They're, they're very fast. They're very fast. It's actually that Perrin has no, like, connection to them or any sort of, like, sense of them. It seems like they would be the ultimate enemy to the wolves. Like, it seems like Dark Hounds would be the, like, the absolute antithesis to wolves. But it seems like I wonder the wolves if... have never, like, brought them up to Perrin before. It doesn't seem like that. It, it... I wonder if they're, like, lost wolf brothers. Not, like, Perrin wolf brother, but, like, the, oh, they sure, are, yeah, yeah. like... But they are they. They're they, the the equivalent of like a dark friend. Yeah, like maybe yeah. like when wolves die, like some of them because they exist in this dream world. If they choose evil, if they are, become corrupted, I wonder mm-hmm. if like that's where they come from, and maybe it's like a point of shame in the wolves that it, like hasn't come up yet, right? That would be interesting. I would like that. Right, because they they hate dark friends. They hate evil. They f- oppose it at every possible corner in in, in yeah, ways yeah. in which that they will sacrifice themselves for it, right? And so mm-hmm. I wonder that it, I wonder if it's like a point of shame for the wolves, the the dark hounds. I think I think it's also uh, the, what what struck me is that I, the reason I thought this was Perrin doesn't like young bull out here. Yeah, and partially because they don't get close enough. I think that maybe it's a proximity thing, but he's yeah. just like shooting arrows. And he, he takes out one of them, and, and he hits one of them. And then Moiraine uses balefire, right? Yeah. It's definitely Balefire. It has to be Balefire because mm-hmm. it's like it's like illegal. She'd be stilled if she even knew if anyone knew she knew how to do it. Which, which uh, why is Balefire illegal if no one knows how to do it? It must just be so dangerous. It's like a Horcrux. Like it's like oh, so okay, yeah, yeah. so dangerous. It's like the Dragon's Fire from Game of Thrones. The where it's like Fiend it's Fire. Fiend Fire. Yeah. yeah. Uh, from or no, from Game of Thrones, you're thinking of like the the green fire that they launch in the Battle of the Bay. Oh, that's like a chemical. Um, I was thinking more like no, the- no, but I'm saying like it, it, it's it's illegal in Game of Thrones because it you it's a fire that you can't put out. Well, I mean, yeah, I guess, but Cersei is the queen, so it doesn't matter. But I'm saying that I, I'm saying that like as a no, but I'm saying as a comparison to this, yeah, it, bale fire isn't put out the same way regular fire is, and so yeah, probably. it's illegal because it's too dangerous. Yeah, wildfire, that's what it is. Thank you. Which is why, yeah, which is why I was kind of thinking like fiend fire from bale fire is heavy spoilers. Wait, well, for- but we what do you mean it's heavy spoilers? We've read it. I mean that that's our hypothesis. So, <laughs> um, oh, it, don't tell us what it is. We're just we don't know. We're just hypothesizing. Yeah. Um, that's what it seems like it is. It seems like it's something that is so dangerous and has mm-hmm. potential to go so wrong. Yeah, yeah. That 100%. like you can't learn. Oh, it. you have an audition. That's fun. Oh, cool. Great. Yeah. I love um, that. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, they kill the wolves. Moraine uses the illegal magic uh, that she hasn't used up until this point for some reason. Uh, in all the other fights that they've been in that were very dangerous. I mean, they got out of those fine, so... I, yeah, I feel like she could have just sent that balefire down the hill in the first book, and that the whole situation would have been a bunch, a lot safer. I feel like they, she also could have used it in Shadar Lagoth. There's, there's been a few times where Moraine could have helped out a little bit more than she did. Maybe against the Forsaken at the end of Eye of the World. 
There were a few times where they were in fights for their lives so far in this franchise, where she was like, I'm going to use my less good magic. I'm going to save that one for when it's nine wolves. I, I wonder if I wonder if it's, that is because of like how how the danger presents itself. Like, um, like maybe I'm she... just saying the forsake the two forsaken at the end of Eye of the World seem to be more dangerous to me than yes. nine wolves. However, I'm saying that like wolves, for example, these dark hounds probably can't channel, can't use magic, whereas the dark the the forsaken maybe could have and could have used it and spun it around and made it into something. Like, horribly detrimental. I guess we've never seen anyone able to redirect a weave in this whole series so far. Yeah. So if that were a thing, we've never seen it. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So then uh, they win, and Moraine goes, well, they're after you, Perrin. They're also after Rand. They're also after Matt, because he blew the Horn of Valir. And we get Zareen's third. Wait, the wh- horn has already been s- blown? Like... Zareen is like, you, you've been hiding... You've been hiding this from me the whole time? <laughs> Yeah. You know where it is? It's already been blown? What is happening? What is the point of my life? Yeah. And that's where we leave uh, them for uh, this section. Yeah. I cannot believe how much Zareen knows after being there for, like, a day, but uh, it's fine. Well, she's bound to them now. And, like, literally, like, she has almost all the information she needs. Oh, yeah. They will not, like, she is part of it. And Moraine knows about the Falcon thing, right? Min Min told Moraine about the Falcon and the Hawk vision. And mm-hmm. so Moraine obviously is like two and two together. Zareen is supposed to be here. Otherwise, I think Moraine would have fought a lot harder for her to mm-hmm. get out. Uh, and so we're back with Matt and Tom. They're attacked by a woman merchant and her crew. Yeah. Can, can, we, can we jump all the way back to the beginning of the episode? When I said that I don't think Rand actually did that. I don't think it actually happened. Uh I think that Rand experienced this fight for himself. Uh, I think that he was like feeling this happening in the weave. Because this is too similar a situation to what happened with Rand. But I think that this is real. And I think that the one that Rand went through that fight was his him experiencing a prophecy or like like an echo of reality through his madness. Interesting. I just assumed that all dark friends had the same tactic. But that's really interesting. I, that did not even cross my mind. I just think that it, it, it was weird. We've seen all of these fights, these epic fights between Rand and Fades and things be mentioned in dream sequences. Yes. And then this is the only one we see in the book from Rand's perspective. Yeah. And I was like, why are we seeing this from Rand's perspective? We haven't seen any of these fights from his perspective really True. so far in the book. Except for him killing the one dog. Yeah, but that that was even couched in his madness a little bit. For sure, for sure, yeah. And so no, I was trying to you. I was trying to like figure out like why would if we're if we're trying to set up that Matt Rand is going mad, why would we show this one totally normal interaction that he has where he's totally in his totally in the right space in his head. Yeah. And I was like, well, maybe this doesn't actually happen. Maybe he thinks that this happens. And then I read this section and I was like, oh, this is an exact, this is almost the exact same situation that Rand went through. Yeah. But Rand is not experiencing reality properly. Yeah. And Rand has seen what other people are going through. And Rand experiences dreams in the same way that Perrin and um, Egwene do. Yeah. And so when I read this, I was going... Oh, I think that Rand lived through this experience that Matt is going through in like a dream world situation. Which is why there's a the weird metaphorical like bowing and moving the bodies yeah. because that seems so out of character. It seems so out of character and it seems so weird that mm-hmm. he was formal and like that Rand Rand just like cut off her head and like in the perspective of Rand it didn't seem like he was like making decisions or anything. It was just things happened. Yeah. And then when we get this interaction, it's like talk through why Matt is doing what he's doing. Yeah. And so I think that it's very interesting. No, like that's really cool. That didn't, I, I literally like, I was like, oh, all the dark friends have the same tactic, right? Because, uh, but this makes, this is so much more in, I- interesting. And I might and be like, making this up. I might be told, you might be right. And it's just the dark friends have the same tactic. They send in the woman merchant first and then they try and kill people. But I just, I feel like everything with Rand is more intentional than that. And him just killing 11 people on the side of the road for no reason is... Well, exactly. It it just doesn't mean anything to anything. And we know Robert Jordan is very intentional (coughs) with his writing. Hmm. You know what I mean? Like, like everything has a purpose. Yeah, it it just seems weird to be like, oh, and then Rand murdered 12 people. 
Yeah, yeah, You yeah. know what I mean? Like, that. Sure. I don't know what the storytelling value of that is. And, yeah. and 12 unnamed strangers that don't come back, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just was like, I don't understand what the... Interesting. Storytelling yeah. beat of that would be, but if it is this connection to this moment... And maybe I'm trying harder to make this a thing than it is. Yeah. But it just really felt so... The the way they the merchants approached the the woman merchant with, like, the male guard, it seemed so similar in interaction that I feel like they have to be tied together somehow. Yeah. No, that's... Yeah. That, yeah. I, I did not think about that. That is very interesting. Well, uh, JJ Puckhead says posing dead bodies is fine. Totally normal. That, but that's what I'm saying. Like, it felt formal and weird. Yeah. I, I think it's normal for Rand to kill them because he thinks he's being hunted by people. Yes. And so if someone, like, rides up to him in the middle of the night, he's going to fight them. Yeah, I, but that, the weird, like, playing with the bodies is... The playing with the bodies, the bowing, that all made it seem, like, separate from reality to me. Yeah. And then Matt having the exact same interaction later. Yeah. Uh, and even even up until the, he doesn't kill the woman, but... um. Uh, she gets cut in the throat. Yeah. Rand decapitates her in his version of it. And then Tom's dagger pierces her throat the yes. way that it does in the show. Yes. In Breenspring. Uh, and that's, yeah, that, that that was it to me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I think that that's fascinating. Cool. Yeah, it might, it might not be true. That's just how I read it. Yeah. Um. So Matt and uh, Tom are talking about this letter that he has to get to Morghese. And Tom's like, there's a cipher in there. There's a hidden message. Mm-hmm. Did you Did you try and figure out what the hidden message was? No. Yeah, I couldn't figure I out. I was like, I don't, th- no, there's It's no. hard to figure out a cipher when you don't have the cipher. Yeah, a little, yeah. little tricky, a little tricky, you know. Yeah. Um, but do you think there's a secret message hidden in that letter? Not really. I do. You do? Okay. I think, I think that, I think that Elaine and Morghese have a secret language. Because when he reads the letter and it's like, I'm fine, I have to leave Tarvalon, don't worry about it. I was like, this letter is really innocuous. That's fair. Like, it, it feels is like, like mother and daughter. Yeah. And like, and if you are so important as to be the queen and like the daughter heir, it does make sense you would be able to have some kind of communication that no one else around you could understand mm-hmm. in times of crisis. Yeah, and then we get to, ladies and gentlemen, final chapter of the week. It's chapter 45. They get to Camelin. Yep. They get to Camelin. Matt's like, this is kind of familiar. Yeah, really interesting talking about how the dagger has warped Matt's rem- remembering of these events. Yeah. Because he was totally conscious. He was there for all of this and he just doesn't quite remember it right. Yeah. Also, probably things have changed a little bit because of the war. Yeah. So yep. Tom is like, uh, what are we doing? And Matt's like, I'm going straight to the the uh, the palace. And Tom's like, we could go eat first. Like, <laughs> she's the queen's not going anywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Matt's like, no, no, no. I got to yeah, get rid of this letter. No, no, no. Yeah. And Tom's like, all right, I'm going to the queen's blessing to see my boy Basil. Basil! Basil He's back, kids. Um, And he is an annoying person to play chess with because he moves slowly. And he always loses. Um, And uh, so Matt is like, I'm just, I'm 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 gonna go back up to that palace. And he's like, I don't remember this, but like, I know where everything is. And he finds him up to the palace and he walks up to the guards and he's like, hi, I am with the Aes Sedai. And they're like, get the hell out of here. He's like, I mean Elaine. And they're like, no, 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 get the hell, guys, come arrest this schmuck. Yeah, I was like, all right, this is some weird, like, buddy cop thing. But it, it was, I mean, I saw it coming. I was like, well, we know that Morghese has had a blow up with the, with the Aes Sedai. Um, <laughs> Jane says the message is her OnlyFans link. Why would she send her OnlyFans link her to mom? her mom? God, no, no. That's what you don't, that's what you don't send your mom. Yeah, you don't want your mom to know you're on OnlyFans. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, geez. Um, yeah, and so we learned that um, so, Lord Gabriel yeah. runs things now. Yeah, Morghese has a new advisor um, mm. who I'm positive is evil. Um, <laughs> well, yeah, because he got rid of Gareth Bryan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gareth Bryan is... is, is oh, right. I think that that's where, that's where, that is where Matt and Tom take Morghese, is to wherever Gareth Bryan is raising sheep. And then Matt, Tom, and Morghese and Gareth Bryan team up against Lord Gabriel. That's going to be book four. They're going to retake the throne of Andor from Lord Gabriel. There's no way he could get this. I don't know. Because uh, <laughs> Gabriel, Gabriel's an angel who is not is not the most like consistently good angel mm-hmm. in God's, you know. It's a reference, I think, to modern Christianity. Mm-hmm. And so I think that G- Gabriel is, um, I think Gabriel is, yeah, the, is, like the, is the bad fallen angel. Yeah, yeah, all right. I mean, he's definitely like a bad guy. Oh, sure. I, I, I really was hoping we'd get more and more gays in this section, so I'm really excited to keep reading. Um, yeah. 
Because, uh, cause, yeah, Matt goes back to the inn and he learns about, you know, that Morghese is still very upset and that yeah. he she's taking her advice from this guy who has replaced, like, half of the city guards with his own people. And it's all very suspicious. And I wonder if Morghese is going to be, like, Theoden. And, mm, um, yeah. well, because it just, like, Morghese, Morghese that we met seems, like, very, like, sure and, like, strong-headed. And so it almost feels like there has to be some kind of magical influence for her to be like, nah, screw everybody. Or maybe it's just that her daughter was like did disappear. Like maybe that is it. But I, yeah, I wonder if it's going to be more of a Theoden King and Grima Worm Tongue kind of situation. But I don't mm-hmm. know. We'll find out next time. Uh, I never. I didn't say Gabriel was evil, but Gabriel in the Bible is like an angel who kind of like does his own thing, and he is a messenger who delivers the message in the way that he wants to deliver it, which is not always in line with how God wants it delivered. Yeah. Which is kind of like you know he he like he has like a little bit of his own. Um, he like takes his own. You know he does it. He does things his own way. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. And Matt's like, I'm not going through the guards. I'm gonna sneak in. So I think that he's going to call Rand on his uh, iPhone. And he's going to be like, hey, how did you get in the palace again? There was a wall that you climbed and then you yeah. fell into a garden, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's going to be like, oh, yes, yes. Thank you for uh... <laughs> thank you for the insight. I'll uh, catch you later. Like, <laughs> Yeah. Um. Yeah, all right. I, that's it. That's, that, that's the section. That's where we leave off on a little bit of a cliffhanger. So Oof. I'm super excited. Yeah, um, yeah. no, this is crazy. Yeah. I, I don't, I like, I because I don't know where the end of this book goes. Me neither. I have, I. What do you think? What do you think is gonna happen? Well, they have to get to tear, right? Like, I think that Matt. I, th- I think the obvious one is that Morghese is gonna get pulled out of uh, Camelin by Matt and Tom. I feel like that that makes the most sense to me. That like they're gonna find out that Morghese is in trouble and that like they're gonna flee and Lord Gabriel's gonna run uh, Andor for a while. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely, there, there's definitely, the, 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 the ends of this book has to kind of either acknowledge or tie up our Camelin, which I don't think that they have time to, like, they, like, tying that up seems to be, like, a longer well, process. Well, it was just that. introduced, so I feel like it would be weird if it was, like, if the Lord Gabriel situation is fixed by the end of the book, it just feels like, oh, why did you introduce that at this point then? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. But we have to get to Tyr in this one. We know that the sword is important and it's on the cover of the original print. Um, so yeah, Rand will Rand will break Tyr. Yeah, Tyr like the 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 heart of stone is going to crumble and Rand is going to proclaim himself Dragon Reborn again. Yeah, and then there will be no doubt that he's the Dragon Reborn for the rest of the series. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I just don't... I Yeah, I guess everyone ends up in tier, and then Matt and Tom and Morghese do their thing in Camelin. I think, like, the Ilian stuff will not be relevant to the rest of the book. I think learning that Samael is running Ilian is not relevant at all from here on out. Yeah. Um, And then will That's going to be a bigger problem. Very relevant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Later on, because dealing with the whole Forsaken is going to be, like, spicy, probably. Yeah, I, I think so. I, I'm excited for it, too. I think that, like... Well, I think we're going to start finding out where the Forsaken are. And, you know, I've, I've made my comments about being a little bit bored of the Baalzaman v. V. Rand, like, cycle of fighting. Yeah, yeah, And so if Baalzaman is going to be alive, but Rand doesn't necessarily keep fighting Baalzaman, like, Baalzaman comes back again in a few fights. Yeah. And Rand has a couple of their Forsaken to take out first. I'm really excited about that. Hi, Lord Salmon. Um, yeah, he's definitely sus. Yeah. Uh, so I'm very excited to meet Hi, Lord Salmon. Uh, Zareen is gonna hate him because you know she doesn't like fish. Yes, it's true. Um, I don't know though. Like I, I, I just I don't know. It's because there's there isn't any like armies moving around right now. It doesn't seem like there's a big battle. Like I understood how the big battle came about in the Great Hunt for sure. I don't know what the fight like the big fight is at the end of this book. Yeah, and it seems like every book ends with a big fight. So I'm curious who the participants in that will be. I think it's going to just be all interior. Like I think it's going to be at this. It's going to be between the, like, dark... It's going to be, like, a magical battle between, like, the Aes Sedai and mm-hmm. the, the Aes Sedai that left the White Tower, I think. It's oh, the, the Dark trap. Friends. Yeah, yeah. So it's going to be it's going to be a smaller battle, but with p- more powerful participants. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Um, all right. Mm-hmm. Well, then, in that case, let's get to our highs and our lows. For those of you who don't know, my family does high-low at the dinner table every night. And the way that we do that is we celebrate each other's highs and we commiserate over each other's lows. So it's important to be there for your family members through it all. Mm-hmm. And so the way we do this is that Clarice does her high, I do my low. 
She does her low, and then I do my high, so that we mm -hmm. compliment sandwich these books. Clarus, high of the week. High of the week is weird because it was kind of in the middle of stuff that I didn't like, which um, I was the Aiel section mm -hmm. where we we find out more about the Aiel. There are like there are different like factions. There are so many like different clans, and, 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 but they all kind of know each other. Yeah. We find out more about how horny they all are, and like this weird thing where like you can become sisters. If yeah, you yeah, want yeah. to, like, I, there's just so much, like, fascinating stuff that I'm really excited to get more into there. So that, I think, was my high. And they're also just, like, badass. Mm -hmm. Like, reading them, like, kicking butt was uh, a good time. Uh, Willis Dawson, thank you so much for that super duper yeah. chat. I would love to see uh, the, the boys FaceTime on their Teleran or iPhones. Yeah, that would be a... Wow, please do not tell Apple about that. Because if they name their phones the Teleran or iPhones, I'm... I would quit. Yeah, I quit play. <laughs> uh, my low is in the same section. Uh, my low is a Gwen getting captured again. I was just like, okay. Yeah. This thing keeps happening to this one girl. Yeah. It was fast it's at least, fine. but yeah. Yeah, I just, I didn't like it. It was too similar to the last two books. And I just, I'm, I'm excited for new things to happen to these characters. Mm -hmm. Um, what's your low? My, I, I don't want to pick the same thing, but is kind of the same thing. Like I was like, oh, this is very much... We can have the same love. Yeah, time. yeah, yeah. I didn't, yeah, I didn't like it. I, I, they got to break out right away, and it, like that part was cool. But when they were just walking down the road and they got ambushed, but, but, like, do, are they just not good at like noticing things around them? Do they not know any weaves that are like war, like to like alert? I, I don't know. They just they kind of got taken out, and I was like. Uh, Nathan Prime says, but the others got kidnapped too. Like, it wasn't just Egwene. No, but Egwene has been specifically kidnapped in every book around the same point in each book. Yeah. that That's the point I'm making, Nathan. Like, Elaine was also kidnapped. Uh, or no, Elaine wasn't. Well, Elaine and Nynaeve were kind of also kidnapped in the last book. But the, specifically, Egwene in all three books around this point in the novel, they are all kidnapped. Yeah. Um, or Egwene gets, like, kidnapped by people. Yeah. Uh, and it's just that it is it is so... Um, repetitive in that way. Yeah. Um, that That's what I don't like about it, is that it's specifically that it has happened to Egwene in every single novel so far. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, and then uh, my high. This one's tough, y'all. I This was my favorite section we've read so far. And I know that I keep saying that, but <laughs> there, there were some really high highs in this. Yeah. Uh, I think my high of all highs this week, though, the, 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 the Dragon Reborn, I think, is the best book so far of the three. Um, and I think, honestly, the best of this bit was... Sorry, I know I'm stalling, but... I'm going to go with Perrin, like, spying on Baalzman and Lanfear. I thought you were going to pick that one. <clears throat> Just because learning that there is sort of... That, that the Dark One's army is not necessarily totally united. Learning that yeah. there is this divide and that there are egos and and problems within that side is is makes them more interesting. Mm -hmm. And the fact that the Dark One isn't this, like, perfect other side that... The, the light has to struggle against because they're totally in lockstep yeah. um, is really cool. And I, I really appreciated that entire sequence. I thought uh, the way that Robert Jordan visualizes the like flying wolf dream thing was just so cool. The mirror yeah. homage was very beautiful. It was very cool. And yeah, I, I think, um, yeah, I just think the Baal Zaman Lanfear, that scene was just awesome. And, and it, it, it inspired like, thoughts in me about visualizing it for myself and that I found myself really daydreaming about and it moved me a lot. So I, I would yeah, go with that. It was really well done. Yeah. I, I, I had a feeling you might pick that one because I also really liked it. Yeah. Um, before we head out here, y'all, apparently he announced it. Apparently he announced it. So we have some news. Well, uh, for those of you who want to see us on the dusty wheel, for those of you who want to see us on the dusty wheel that's happening. It's going to happen. It's going to be happening. Uh, I found out in our discord that he announced it. <laughs> yeah, I never, we don't watch his show because we don't want to get spoiled. We don't spoiled. want to get spoiled. Yeah, so yeah. So we're so excited to finally be on the Dusty Wheel April 10th at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Mm -hmm. uh, Wait, oh, it's going to be live, right? It's going to be live. I was like, are we pre-recording it? Yeah, no. I don't know when it's going to come out. but uh, uh, We end with a smet corner. Don't worry, Sith Guy. That's yeah, the yeah, last we'll, thing. We've got to get everything right. else out of the way first. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, we're going to be on the Dusty Wheel uh, April 10th 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That is a Sunday. Yeah. Uh, the reason we're doing it then is so that it's after we've like fully finished the third book. So we can talk a little, a little bit more about the first three books. Yes. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm really excited to be uh, going on the Dusty Wheel. 
Yeah, me too. It's going to be fun. Yeah. It's going to be like, we're going to have to obviously be careful. Well, they're going to have to be careful to talk around things that like we don't know yeah, and like yeah, where yeah. those like lines are. So that'll be fun. Because I'm sure we have some like beliefs about things that are, are, are wrong or incorrect or like uh, different. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so it's going to be fun to like have those perspectives. So uh, Also, before we get into Smart Corner, last thing, y'all, if you are in the United States of America and you want free food, go to <laughs> HelloFresh. HelloFresh is a meal kit delivery service that brings only the freshest ingredients to your door for a totally reasonable price for yeah. what you're getting. And also, if you use our code, you get 16 free meals and three yep. free treats. Uh, if you are like, I, guys, I really like the Nerdy Wordy Book Club and I want to support them. The best way you can do that right now, honestly, is to go get is, groceries. Yeah, it's honestly this like... It, it, this is a really cool sponsorship for us. We really like HelloFresh. We're yeah. super excited to like. I'm about have to have HelloFresh for lunch. Yeah. I'm having HelloFresh tacos for lunch. So. Highly, highly recommend it. Yeah. And we use it in our personal lives. We only really endorse things that we use in our personal lives. And um, yeah, thank you to everyone who has signed up already. Absolutely. Uh, we yeah, would yeah. love if you could as well if you are in the United States. Our mod Dakuna just dropped the link in the chat. Unfortunately, thank the you, linking Dakuna. code do not work outside of the United States. But if you're in the States and you want some food and you want to support the Nerdy Wordy Book Club, go get yourself some delicious meals over at uh, that link right there. Yeah. And now... For everyone's favorite. The moment we've all been waiting for. <laughs> uh, we are going to add sex scenes into the horniest section of this book yet. And I that's saying something because last week was pretty horny. Yeah, we keep being like, wow, this section is pretty horny. It's pretty oh, horny. oh, but but this section is pretty horny. And then our chat is like, that wasn't about sex. And I'm like, I don't know, guys. It seems like it was guys, about sex. I think Karen is a teenage guys. boy. It's about sex. <laughs> the, the three of I them. I was an 18-year-old man at one point. And I'm no less horny now than I was then. But I was more creative about it back then. Creative? <laughs> well, I hadn't experienced as much. So like I didn't yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. I I didn't know what the limits on what was possible were. Now I've I've done a lot and I kinda know what like what can actually be accomplished. Do you know what I mean? No. No, I don't know. Yeah. Sure. sure when I was sure. a kid I had dreams of things that I would be like, this would be amazing. And then like I did things close to that and I was like, like no, no, you can't go that far. That would be really weird. Yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, where, where, where would you add a sex scene to this? No, you go first. I'm trying to think oh of Oh my god, best. there's so many. I know, there's so many. There's so many. Like, when like, Karen goes in on Moiraine, and her just being like, hey, like, I need you to do something for me really quick. You know what I mean? Like, she, like, fatal attractions him. Like, um, <laughs> I just, I need a moment. Fa uh, fatal instinct? What's that movie called? Basic I instinct. I don't know. They're, those are all movies, and I don't know what I am, I which one it is. absolutely no idea. Um, I also think that, like, the girls on the ship sharing the bed. I know! I was like, you all, okay. Yeah, they're, you know, you gotta, you, they gotta have some stress relief. Okay. Hey, they're, they're like, they're about to have a rough time in tier. I, I can almost guarantee it, so I hope that yeah. they are having a good time now. Uh. <laughs> um, let's see where else. I think that Zareen and Perrin, I think when, like, Zareen and Perrin, That's if, Mar if, if Marain hadn't shown up, on, like, right then, I think give Zareen, like, five minutes, she would have been in Perrin's pants. You think so? Yeah. I'm, I'm okay. I, guys, I, I this don't... is actually a good time for me to announce my, my, my big announcement. Um, I have actually been asked by the Robert Jordan estate to write a new Wheel of Time book. They want to continue the franchise. Now that the movies are out, they want to keep selling books in the franchise. Yeah. Uh, and so I am actually writing um, uh, the, the follow-up, the sequel to the Wheel of Time in Perrin's pants. Uh, oh it is going to be a journey into the pants of Perrin Ibarra. Uh, Wolf Brother. Um, yeah. Oh, well, you know, Wolf Brothers. They, this is fake news. They, they have they have a sexual stamina that cannot be matched. This is, I would not be surprised. Yeah, no, Perrin's a monster in the sheets. Yeah, yeah, I, oh, I yeah. would not be. Zareen, but he needs is so Zareen is so confident, and yeah. he is going to shatter that. <laughs> he is going to make her, like the Hawk and the Falcon are going to have to work so hard together because he's just going to go. It's going to be insatiable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm, for sure. Um, God, yeah, there there's so many. There, uh, there are so many good ones, but like it's not like a scene. But yeah, like the the IEO part was so horny. I was just like, cause like, cause and Galena is just like giggling about it. I'm like, there's they're doing stuff on in on no, a ship yeah, in that yeah, cabin, hundred yeah, percent. Yeah, yeah. She's like, we should be first sisters, and and they're like, yeah, but we like have threesomes, and she's like, we should be first sisters. <laughs> she's like, hey, hey Elaine, you're kind of hot. Elaine, you, me, Rand, first sisters, it works now. The one thing that don't tell my father. The one thing that we didn't actually chat about was in the like town that they were in, that 
men kept like coming up to the girls to try to stop <laughs> them from leaving. The, no, the men were like hitting on them, and the yeah. girls were like, "It's so flattering." They're like, "Wait, what is going on?" Well, no, Egwene was like, "It's flattering that people think that I'm attractive when Elaine is." No, but she was me. like, even Nynaeve was like blushing with a little smile on her face but before smacking them across the, the face. Yeah, yeah. I was like, "Oh my god!" I'd let oh. Nynaeve smack me. I would let. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, yeah, that was that was very funny to read. I was like, Egwene, you you cute. You Demonetize cute. confirmed. <laughs> We haven't been demonetized yet. Honestly, all the money from these shows comes from the spoiler chats and from, like, the views the after. super chats. Yes. Yeah. Um, Ty Thanis, thank you for being the first. I, I, think, I think you're the first to hit three months because you were one of the first to sign up for the Narcs. I think so. Um, guys, I'm catching on today's book club. If you like things about the Wild Hunt, read the Fiona Var Tapestry from Canadian author Guy Gabriel K. I like Canadian authors. That's fun. Yeah, good old, good old... Canadian boys and girls and non-binaries. Thank you so much for becoming a member of the Nerd Table. Y'all, if you do want to support the show and you're not in the U.S., consider becoming a Narg of the Nerd Table. Yeah. You get some cute little emotes and you get a little green color as your chat name so that And Nargs are stand smart. Out. So. Nargs are smart. Yeah. Yes. You can, you can go to your mom and be like, Mom, I am legally smart now because I, I'm an ARC. I, I am Blue. an ARC. Blue, thank you so much for joining the Blue Nerd Table shoogs. for a third month. Thank you so yeah, much. We, it means the world. Yeah. We really appreciate you, all your support. We love doing this. Yeah. It's the highlight of our week. So thank you for sharing your Friday. Well, thank you for sharing this chunk of time with us because we have people from all over the globe. So. Um, oh, you know what? Smut Corner. Um, when Aludra was like, oh my God, you saved my life, Matt. I need to find a way to thank you. She hadn't had her fireworks. Hey, may, yeah, maybe she's don't, like. Down, 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 down. She's it's been on the would have woken up and be like, Ugh. That's, that's, oh that's, no! Does someone have sex in here? Was I mean, it's smell? a barn. It would you'd have to go real hard to like overpower the barn. Matt smell. goes hard. All right, Matt goes hard. She's an illuminator. Matt, Matt, Matt would she? She can do things with her hands. Will you light my candle? Um, oh my god! Mm -hmm. I understand. The reason we save Smut Corner for the very end of the show is because people leave for this. There's a yeah. lot of people that don't like this part of the show and don't realize that this is my favorite part of the show. <laughs> Yeah, so if you stuck around for it, uh, we appreciate but it. But to the 5% of the audience that leaves for this, we understand. We yeah. love you too. Yeah, you can do what you want. <laughs> uh, Y'all, I think that's it. That's it for the week. That's it. We kind of got through everything, and I'm super oh, excited. Oh, next week. To... Next week. Yes. Last week, we didn't say what chapters we were reading up to, and people kept asking about it. Uh, can you guess what we're reading up to next week? It's no, really easy. You should definitely make sure everybody knows. Go read the end of the book, y'all, and come back next Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern, for the Nerdy Wordy Book Club when we finish The Dragon Reborn. As always, you can follow us around the internet. I'm at Nerdy Nightly. I'm at Claris Polaris. If you are listening to our podcast feed, uh, leave a five-star review on Apple. If you're not listening to our, our podcast feed and you have an Apple device, go to uh, the Apple Review Store and leave a five-star review on the Nerdy Wordy Book Club. It is the number one way to grow the podcast, and it mm -hmm. would really, it's free. If you want to support us and you want to do something free that helps us out, like the video, leave a comment in the actual comments down below, uh, and not like the chat, but in the comments, and give us a five-star review on Apple. We're going to start checking those, and we're going to start reading uh, them in the uh, podcast. Yeah. So if you want to get in the podcast, leave a five-star review on Apple, yeah. and we'll be reading those. Uh, we'll we'll pick a couple every week to read out um, yeah. because apparently that's how you do this. So we're going to try and be better about <laughs> we're that. We're doing our best. Um, thank you to the mods for being amazing. Yeah, our mod squad, y'all are the best. Mm -hmm. um, and just know that at some point I will buy all of you dinner. Uh, <laughs> I, owe, I owe all of our mods dinner. Absolutely. Uh, and that will happen soon. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. That's it. End of the book. Bye, guys. Let's go. We'll see you next week. Do something nerdy tonight. <laughs> Farewell. So long. Farewell. Sam, thank Sam you Parfait. For the super chat. Perrin Blacksmith in the Streets, Wolf Brother in the Sheets. I mean, I would take either of those in either of those places. <laughs> Blacksmiths are notoriously 